right one. I was really proud. Hey, I thought it was nice well going to really? get the outro. Like, see, hello, everyone, and welcome to your Monday Night Plastic Crack podcast. And we're on episode 11. Yep. Of, yep. Um, of well music yeah. Pod. And we're delighted because we've been joined by Mr. Andy Hobday again. Thank you very much for taking time. By popular out. demand. His, popular own popular. Demand. His own demand, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much um, for inviting me. It, I, I was saying to Andy just before we came on, keep it, it was the start of September when Andy was on before. It's Isn't been that it's been long ago. Like, yeah. Really? yeah. Gee, I know. Whiz. I know. It was um, it's mad because I because I, we were saying we were talking about the up, you know, the the, the 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 rumblings about Gangs of Rome and and what was going to be coming out, and then uh, and then here we are, and then of course we have Paul on next week over yep. on Don's mm. channel. So uh, so you're you've got the advantage again because you're on first, so he has to respond to anything that you say. You can get the digs in first, and then he'll have to respond. Yeah, I'll, well, he, he threatened to turn up in the uh, comments today. So <laughs> ah, oh, fantastic! <laughs> we'll make sure those ones are starred and uh, yeah, and, and kept definitely. prosperity. Um, as you may have noticed as well, we are a man down. Um, Ken no, is no. having to take a couple of weeks off just simply because um, wedding preparations and something to do with work mean that unfortunately he can't join us for the next couple of weeks but we'll obviously wish him all the best and I'm sure he's going to be watching this and then sending me comments saying why didn't you ask this and why didn't you do this um, so um, he will be back soon anyway of course we are I'm going to say thank you to everybody who's on the replay and thank you very much to everyone who's taken the time uh to join us and i can see that we've got some um some people who have uh, never managed to uh to join live before so uh so andrew first time he's going to catch the live show about two and a half years of watching it on the replay welcome well done, <laughs> um, andrew you know better late than never mate you know as all we'll say what a name muskets and mousers Oh, Ooh, wow. That is, oh, yes, that's, that's a game type. That's a, that's a rule set name. I, that like, that. <laughs> I like that. Hello, welcome. And um, and who else have we We've got? Uh, Dazzling Greetings from Warsaw. Fantastic. Well, thank you very, very much for. I don't think we got the... Poland on the map yet. No, nope, so that's a new one. one. Oh, we can add one. We've got an update one. for the map, Poland. Yes. Fantastic. Excellent. Have you, have you been updating it, Dom? Uh, well, every time I look, it's already been done. So I think, okay, that's covered it. So, but I'm pretty sure Poland hasn't been on there. So I will do it now. Excellent. Well, not right we're now, but I'll. No. We're, we're slowly <laughs> becoming more, more global. We're slowly getting it more global. Um, anyway, guys. So um, obviously we've got we've got Andy here today. And last time we were we were chatting Barons War and Outremer. And um, but you've got a Kickstarter live <laughs> um, as we speak yes. Live. Yes. for um, for the much anticipated. Um, are you calling it the second edition, or what are you? Are you saying it is it a? New it's edition? version. It is a version two. Version uh, it's two. Still gangs. Yeah, it's still gangs of Rome. Uh, you know, so it's still the same uh, game idea, but we've uh, changed lots of the mechanics. So. The overall feel of the game is the same, but the way it plays is different now. I just think. violence is the feel. Of, I mean, it's a, we play war games anywhere; it's violence. But it, when I've played Gangs of Rome, it's just, <laughs> it's just, it's brutal and also really vindictive as a game. <laughs> really, oh, totally! Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Really, it's, really it's one of the really vindictive. Well, what we'll do, we will get around and obviously I'm not going to let Graham play, play it then. Like Jesus, <laughs> no, don't let Graham. Oh, I'm going to let you play it. We played Dead, Dead Man's Hand, and he, uh, we played a huge um, game. It was a four-player game, and Dom just watched me fight out with uh, someone else and just picked off the survivors. So uh, that's in the right thing to do at the time. You, you kept running fair, in front of my blokes, so what can I do? I ran in front of your guns. Yes, <laughs> sorry. What, what else would you do? Um, so anyway, welcome, everybody. Remember, we are sponsored by Boards and Swords, and um, if you go over and you order from them, you get a nice 5% discount on top of the hefty discount they have already um, if you enter PCP5 in when you check out. Um, and stay tuned as well, because today in the news section, we'll give you details on this month's giveaway, um, and then we'll draw the winner next week. So uh, stay tuned, and we'll give you details of that later <coughs> on epic. in the stream. Epic. <coughs> that's epic. That, 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 that's not epic. this week. Oh, by your epic. I was about to say, that's not now. That's, um, <laughs> um, so um, basically, yes, um, guys, if you, as 
has been pointed out in the group, there is a, a new release coming out from uh, from Warlord Games with the Pusher Pike Epic. If you're looking to get it, you can't get a better deal than on uh, at Boards and Swords. Um, go over there. He's already got 15% off. So if you add the PCP, you're getting 20% off on that that box set. Uh, virtually that, free. Uh, that's all I'm saying. It's virtually free. Virtually <laughs> free. That's what it's I tell my free. wife. It's virtually free. Is that what you said about everything behind you? Exactly and the cabin what you're I said. Again. Exactly <laughs> what I pays, pays yes. for itself. This this is my kid's inheritance. <laughs> exactly. This is, this. this is an investment. <laughs> They don't, you know. Jeez. Oh, anyway. I was um, just before we, we go. Um, I was there's potential that I may be uh, moving soon, so I was going through through boxes and things, and I found my old 40k Death Guard army that was converted from the Forge World pieces back in I think it was the early 2000s that those got released. Um, at, or no, probably not. Anyway, and, and I did them, and then Ken was straight on there saying, "How much do you want for it? How much do you want for it, Martin?" <laughs> um, so I was saying, "Can I make him? If I can, I knock some money off and then say I'll give it to you for 150 quid as a wedding present." Can I, I do that? Nice. Reasonable. Yeah, good. Can good. I, cool. I, can, is, yeah. This a, is this a wedding present for Ken and Laura, or just Ken? It would be for for Ken and Laura, and then I get to watch Laura get angry with Ken. I'm um, yeah. sorry, Andy. I'm Ken's best. I'm Ken's best man. Yes, <laughs> so I remember. I've been, I remember. For, for some, for my sins. Um, I, I so in a way, it's present. a present for yourself, really. <laughs> I just, I just, yeah, it's for the entertainment. I, I, I don't trust Ken fully to have organised entertainment, so I feel feel like we have to create our own, uh, <laughs> which which obviously will happen on the stag do, uh, which is only four weeks away. Um, we have to decide whether or not oh we're doing the stream goodness. on the Monday for that, and we're going to be out in Nottingham on the on the weekend, and then and then <laughs> hiding. There's axe the throwing happening, isn't there? So I think probably there is axe throwing. There is axe throwing because we have Stee who is quite tall, and we have Miller who looks like an actual Viking. So um, it seems <laughs> actually Miller fun. would be crap at it. He, he, if it was pike throwing, he'd be fantastic. Only if it's rocket <laughs> propelled. Yeah, missile rocket propelled pikes. one. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> anyway. you know how he likes missile pikes. <laughs> He does. Um, anyway, Andy, thank you uh, for coming back on. Um, so what we'd normally do at this point is go around and ask everyone what they've been up to. But I think it'd be rude um, not to just simply give you a chance to, I suppose, properly introduce yourself just in case there's a chance that anyone who's watching didn't see you last time or, or know who you are, really. Um, and then um, we'll have a chat about what you've been up to, what we've been up to, and then get stuck into uh, Gangs of Rome. Yeah, of course. Uh, I'm I'm Andy Hobday. It's like it's like a dating site, isn't it? Hi, I'm Andy Hobday. Hi, right, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you don't want any of the dates to come off this one, mate. That's all. <laughs> I'm uh, I, I've been gaming for a long time. Uh, background Games Workshop. I worked for Games Workshop uh, a long time ago. Now we were funny enough. We were talking about it today. How long ago it is since I left? It's probably about fifteen years since I left. Uh, but I was there for about 15 years. I worked for Warlord Games uh, for about nine years. I, 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 did, I did notice that when I had to send Warlord an email the other day, and I put yeah. info at Warlord, your name popped up as the record as the uh, same <laughs> name on, on, on my Gmail, which was the last <laughs> time I emailed. Something. So I probably emailed you saying um, this is missing. <laughs> Oh, I don't like this. <laughs> sort it <What>? out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I left Warlord, uh, ended up buying into Footsaw with a friend of mine who uh, we, we own Footsaw 50 50. He runs it day to day. I'm just a, uh, a partner, uh, but obviously associated with it. And it's allowed me to pursue all the things I'd like to do in the hobby. So uh, things like the Baron's War and uh, mm. make a skirmish game with hoplites in, for instance, when hoplites don't skirmish and uh, <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that allows me, allows me to, uh, you know, uh, be as historical as I'm allowed to be while still playing the games I want to play. So there we go. Uh, Richard from Workbench where I says he worked with you at GW before he was sent off to uh, manage Italian stores. Wow. There we go. Yeah, yeah. I recognise him. Hello. Hello. Uh, we go. One of the things um, that we... Um, I remember when Graham was on uh, Gra uh, and, um, uh, from uh, Grey for Now Games and he yeah. was the manager in the, he was the manager in the, or in the Cambridge store probably when I was young in there and he was selling me models um, <laughs> to, <laughs> to do these things. It's... it's 
it's it's it's absolutely mad. And yeah, no, that's absolutely I, I, awesome. I started in the stores as well, you know. So I my first store was uh, Derby, Sadlegate in Derby, when I was about twenty. So uh, a long time ago. Derby oh, yeah. seems to be the uh, the beating heart of the Plastic Crack podcast because no matter where we go, everyone seems to end up back there. Whether there or is, not we're, we're yeah. holding the event, yeah, it's because it's slap bang in the middle. That's why. There's definitely yeah. some kind of spiritual link to Derby, isn't there? I think it's like some kind of. It's I don't the know. Tiger straight. Bar. That's it's a tiger That's bar. That's the tiger yeah. bar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's all you can say. Tiger bar. <clears throat> and the all you, the all you can eat Indian that that does oh, that does oh, have that's a good nice. to that That's is. good too. So you, um, when we, we were um, when you were on last time, Utremail was about mm. to um, was about to shift. So how's that? How's that gone? Because um, there's been lots of excited people, including um, many people in the group that have been posting up pictures and opening their their packages. And as I said, posting the guy with the the, the officer with the upside down shield, shield. holding it. Yeah, the, yeah, the, uh, yeah, the uh, hospital uh, commander. Uh, yeah, it's gone. I, I think it's gone really well. I'm sure, you know, hopefully we're not going to get a load of people in the stream now going, no, it's not. It's <laughs> That's true. Yeah. <laughs> but, They're uh, so polite. They you know, never say anything anyway, don't they? Well, no, of course they uh, don't. We, we, try, we try and uh, stay in touch all the way through. I mean, it was 10 months ago it started. So we, we shipped the last packages about oh, six weeks ago. Uh, we had that whole nightmare with Royal Mail. And Royal uh, Mail yes. for us is the is the preferred provider into the EU, uh, and then just as we were about to ship them, it kind of all went you know wrong. So that took a bit. So we've had the last stuff going. We think it's all landed now, except a couple still out there. Uh, and if anybody hasn't got their pledge, do let them do well. Let Futsal now, and we'll get it sorted. But all in all, I think it's been really successful. And I'm really pleased. You know, we've had a great response to it, and. Uh, you know the book is great. I'm, you know I'm not obviously I'm going to say that, but the <laughs> <laughs> is the is the best book we've done so far. It's uh, it's it's really colourful. It's you know really nicely laid out, great pictures, and it adds so much depth now to the Barons' War because what we've done is uh, it's mostly army lists. So uh, you've taken all of the all of the the current stuff that you get in the Barons' War because they can be crusading barons and and dudes and whatever they can go but you've also got settled franks and then you've got all of the uh uh islamic armies that you can choose from as well and we've done a really cool way of you being able to pick your force so you can make it very individual so uh it's, it's just really cool and you can mix it up we've gone for that whole you know it's not as black and white everybody thought it was about religion but it's about yeah uh space it was about land everybody was trying to get the areas and, and the land so it's uh we tried to do that and make it really interesting it, it is a good bit i mean i've i've got this quite large first crusade project at the moment mm. and what, what drew me to it was the, the, the complete mix of of essentially troop types and everyone fought for everybody at this point yeah. you know there's um i've any excuse so i i find the 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 sort of slimmest link I can is like, no, they're going in. So I've got Andalusians that, that are in there. Uh, the Varangian guard, because at this, uh, well, yeah, 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 this yeah, yeah. They, they were mostly Saxons that had been exiled. Yeah, from, yeah. You go, yeah. so it's like, right, they're going in and they're not going to get on with the Normans. So they might be on the same side. So they're not going to do things. Then Dom gave me this great link to a, uh, a reference where the the Normans were billeted near the the Varangian Guard in Constantinople, and they basically tried to tear each other apart. So they had to keep they keep did. them apart, and that's before they even get to the Holy Land, <laughs> and, it, yeah, and it, yeah, yeah. it all kicks off. So it's it's a really rich setting for wargaming, and well, just just for anything really, but definitely for wargaming. You, you, what if scenarios in that oh. sort of in, in that period that you can just do pretty much whatever you want. I agree. Yeah, it's a real melting pot, like you say, and that's that's the the best thing about it, you know. And then obviously you've got all the Mongols coming in at the yeah. end, you know, finishing it all off. So it's such a big timeline. Uh, it's over a hundred years, you know, which makes it a really interesting period. So I, I'd I'd like to go back and do more, you know. Mm. There's more we'd like to add. Uh, so yeah, there's lot there's yeah. lots more we'd like to go back and do. So we. We were talking just before the stream started about mm. obviously the Barons, the Barons War group. There's, I've got some plans on the channel for the Barons War. Dom's got 
a lot of your miniatures. <laughs> I, I have got <laughs> a lot of your. They miniatures. might have been fact, diverted into Ireland, but they there's a lot yeah. of them out there. Yes, <laughs> well, they're, they're actually holding up that table behind him. That's the mm, you know, they're, they're, the, they're the box. Mm. Um, but is you have you got? I mean, you said obviously there were lots of things you wanted to explore. Have you already got? Are you planned out what you want to do, or are you now just going to focus on Gangs of Rome and that for a while, or and then sort of step back into Baron's War later on? Yeah, I think Baron's War is always going to be bubbling, bubbling away. Uh, it's it's primarily a project that uh, Paul Hicks and I are doing. So mm -hmm. even though uh, Footsaw allows me to do it, because obviously I can have them manufacture it, etc. But it's a kind, it's a it, as Kickstarters or projects go, it's a, it's it's kind of ring fenced as for Paul and I. So even though Footsaw get to go and sell it all afterwards, etc., we can mm -hmm. pretty much do what we want to do. But what we, cool. you know, what we wanted to do this year was there was uh, we've we've written a lot more for Utremer than we, that went in the book. We actually had to take out about seventy five pages because it was wow. uh, it was wow, yeah wow. it was ridiculous. We got a bit carried away, and but also <laughs> <a bit> carried <laughs> away. <laughs> uh, we we worked with a chap called Benedict as well, and he he's a medieval historian and a gamer, so he. He saved me loads of time of research because he just knew it all. So <laughs> Benedict brought a load in because it was a period that he, he's really interested in. So we ended up looking at see, proper siege warfare. We've touched on it, but we've looked at big siege warfare. We've mm. looked at uh, big battles because a lot of the stuff in Ultramar was big battles. And, and couple that with uh, the anarchy that we, we want to release. A lot I, of the anarchy was... I Something I was going to ask about because I was reading about. Um, uh, well, I, I was talking to Dom earlier. I won't go into, into it now. But I had a bit of a dive. I had a bit of a dive. One of those situations at the weekend where I started reading and going, "Oh, I wonder if people make figures." Oh, I wonder. And then went down there. But the anarchy is something that I, I would I just like to point like, out. I'm the one that always gets the grief for these side projects that come out of nowhere. Side projects, yeah. Now, Martin may have just done exceeded me by quite a considerable way with the one he's just done. And there was no, no alcohol thought... involved either from my There was no alcohol, she, but my wife wasn't in the house. That's why. Ah, uh, <laughs> you were on I was, left, right. I was left yeah. to my own devices, and now yeah, I've got yeah. one of those. Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was like, oh, yeah. I can do this. I wonder if anyone makes figures. And then two hours later, oh, uh, there's 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 a lot of figures. Uh, okay, so... Martin, the answer, the, amount, the answer to that question is yes. If anybody <laughs> makes figures, they're out there, trust me. Oh, yeah. You just Some, haven't yeah. find them. Yeah, they're there. Yeah. But, but the anarchy, so the anarchy is, is definitely something you want to explore. Oh, we've, we've written the book. So uh, but I say we, that's the royal we. Benedict is, as a side project, while he was a bit bored, I think, he, he's written a 180 page book on the anarchy, which is all done. We're just proofing it now. So. <laughs> yes. So. Uh, <laughs> John, yes, that's John. right, John. Yeah. Yes, John. <laughs> Absolutely. But where you go, and that's the first time we've actually managed to have a name for it. So I think that's going to have to stay. Welcome yeah. to the anarchy. anarchy. The anarchy. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Welcome, so, welcome to you. So yeah, it's all it's all it's all done and ready to go. So uh, it's just got a bit uh, side sidetracked. The, the problem we have is it's like you guys with your projects. Yeah, I have a million and one really cool, like well, I think they're cool, really cool ideas or things <laughs> I'd like to do for games or supplements or books. I just don't have the time to do them all. And yeah. uh, I'm I'm pretty easily distracted too. But having having people like, like I do a lot with George George Asling. Uh, mm -hmm. He he kind of co-writes a lot of the stuff we do. Uh, Benedict, like I say, has come on board, and we've got other people we've worked with. And the more more people we find, and the more people come in, the more we can actually do. What's what's slowing our output is is just being able to do it. Mm -hmm. What's the sort of um, process that you go through when you're deciding whether to start something like that? You know, do you just sort of all sit around and go, yes, we should do it? Or does someone go, don't be stupid, Andy, there's no way we can do that? Or, you know, I don't know. What, what happens? Uh, well, An insight really into the uh, into the thought process. Oh. Into the thought process. You know, you know what? I, I've learned yeah. I've learned a lot in the last uh, five years, well, six yeah. years, where we've been doing it. When I when I left Warlord and I went to Futsal with my friend Mark Barr, who, who, who's there, we both got quite quite a lot of uh, experience in the industry, which actually mm -hmm. in the gaming industry experience, which means we're both very old, and. Uh, <laughs> 
we thought we knew we knew what we were doing. We thought we knew everything. So off we went quite happily, skipping along. Let, oh, let's make some miniatures. It can't be that hard, can it? And it really is. And <laughs> turns out we, it is. It is, yeah, yeah. And we 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 just started chasing rabbits to start with, of things that we were interested in. Yeah. And then I think the first, the number one advice I can give to anybody is just question yourself. Do you really need to do that? <laughs> you know, that's the first. Do you really, really need to do it? And that's the first thing we always ask each other: Is it will the world be a better place if we spend money on this? Will we get our money out of it? You know. And if the answer and to it, that is, you know, yes, then let's do it. Or if the answer is, we might not, but we we really want to do this or we're interested in it, then off we go. Yeah. So uh, that's yeah. that's the first thing. Like when we did Test of Honor, you know, uh, mm. Graham and I. Uh, about six or seven years ago now, we we wanted to play Samurai. I, it's my favourite period, full stop. It's the thing I really love. Uh, Graham really likes Samurai too. It's the thing he loves. I've known Graham for 20 years. I said, let's play a Samurai game, and we couldn't find something we wanted to play, so we wrote right. some rules. And that that's mm. how it started. And a lot of the a lot of the time along along the way as we go, it's like, oh, what do we want to do? What do we want to play? what we're interested in so that, yeah. that's how it evolves it's not a i don't have a massive master plan uh but it might be easier if i did but we don't <laughs> uh, and, 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 and like the barons war is a good example i did the barons war I, I probably said this last time i was on i did the barons war because i wanted some barons war figures yeah and i spoke to mark about uh, Futsal and said i really really want to do some uh barons war figures and he said yeah 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 for two years this went on and we couldn't find the budget or the money to do them. And then I got really frustrated. Let's just say frustrated, because I guess it's a bit of a family show, maybe. And I said, right, I'm off. <laughs> That's fine. I'm gonna, Let's go for it. Gonna, go for I'm it. Gonna, it's I'm going to make some Barons War figures. And uh, that's I, I was never interested in Kickstarter or any of that kind of thing. I, didn't, I, did, I could see the value in it, but it was the only way I could raise the funds to do it. Mm. And then I knew Paul. And we did we did some Barons War figures, and the whole Barons War project has come out of the fact that I wanted to do sixteen packs of figures, right? Yeah. And we took it to Kickstarter. People liked it, you know, and it's just snowballed out that oh, we'll do some rules. We'll we'll make some more figures. Yeah, I was going to say there wasn't rules in the the first Kickstarter. No, they came they came no. later. Yeah. So I've, I've, we, there's we, someone, we some one of our friends locally, who's who's bought into the Baron's Law purely because he's the biggest William Marshall fanboy. Me too. Uh, that that, that yeah, I know, <laughs> and, and he was like, he's on the cover. Got it. Don't I don't care how it plays. And I he's got William Marshall. And, inside, and uh, so I showed him. I, I said, like him. There's about there's about four different like sculpts. Got them all. <laughs> we're gonna play. We're, we're gonna go from nineteen-year-old William Marshall up until where it's like we'll we'll, we'll have it. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Um, oh, I love one, one I, of my, that. Oh, sorry, I love, I love a, William Marshall. That, well, one, one of one of my other him, friends, yeah. he loved it so much. There's a William, there's a William Marshall in his Wars of the Roses army. He doesn't care. He's there. <laughs> he's, he's there. Livery and everything. He's there leading leading a unit. He doesn't care. He's like, who's yeah. really going to argue? Well, who's you know what? Argue? If there was anybody that could have survived that long to have been of the Wars of the Roses, it probably would have this been William true. Marshall, wouldn't it? He this, was. This a bit well, he was Earl. Of, he was Earl of Pembroke, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. He was Earl of Pembroke. So that would have got rid of the Tudor issue. For a start, that wouldn't have been a problem. <laughs> we could have just got him in there. Um, well, what I'll say, guys, if you've got a question for Andy, post it um, up in there if Andy, <laughs> Andy's happy to answer them. And what yeah, we'll do yeah, is when we get to the, uh, the the second segment after the news, then we'll go we'll go through the questions. So post away, and we'll we'll start those comments, um, and then we'll uh, we'll come back. So what I think we'll do is just give Andy a chance to uh, to catch his breath and maybe question why he agreed to do this um, <laughs> in, the, in the first place, um, and. We'll go. I'm just going to go to Dom, and oh, because but... I know it's going to be the longest part. No offense, Steve. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, I might disappoint you this week because I actually haven't done much this week because I've been really, what? really busy in real life. So yeah, it's oh. just been. Um, so I, I've done. Fill it up a bit then. Yeah, yeah sorry. Just I just you know oh. I hope you have got something else to fill in the next half an hour because um, it's not going to be me talking. Well, I did well, do, we do some on the Irish. That's, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I did do some more of my Irish, this uh, unit Bonyaks, um for the Irish forces. Where are they from? Uh, they are a mixture of Perry's. Um, there are some, uh, oh God, I think there's some Griffin Beast in there. Various, I, I mean, loads of different varieties. Oh, I just lovely. wanted hairy ass, dirty Irish is basically the, the concept with them. 
So hopefully that Likewise. works. Um, and I did a build, 15 mil buildings, a couple of them, because very nice. I wanted to do them. And oh, again, nice. they're 3D prints, drink everyone. Um, and I just <laughs> did, did, did them in solidarity with Alex. And then because um, I'm supposed to be having an, um, um, an O group game on Friday, I think. I thought I'd better finish off a few more Germans. So um, oh, very nice. There's a few more. Um, these were actually I didn't fully paint these. I bought them pretty badly painted on the interwobble, and then just sort of touched them up and improved them a bit. So <laughs> the interwobble. So there you go. Yeah, the interwobble. The interwobble. Yeah. I might have to change our network at work to record that. That's interwobble. <laughs> the the interwobble. Well, I, I mean, it's a, it's a, yeah, yes. There you go. So that's all. That's all I've done. I'm afraid. That's all. Oh, I like, oh, Steve. Uh, you might. Have you got him pipped this week? No, I think he might do. Oh, oh a few really? seconds. I'm I'm currently messing around with those really small fiddly helmet decals. Do you, do you want me to do I, my bit and then all then I want to do is swear? No, it's a fact. I'll do mine now. <laughs> oh, okay, so okay. not much. I need to do your bit. Um, all I want to say is to everyone that posted BattleTech models on the Facebook group, I hate you all. <laughs> <laughs> because look, look what happened. <laughs> Love it. I ended up <laughs> buying a box of them. Um, they are thank you. They're loosely, loosely, loosely based on Clan Coyote. Um, should have been lighter. Um, but no, my first painted mechs ever. I was really quite chuffed with them. Um, very nice. And oh, they're just, they're nice. They, Look at those. They were just a lot of fun to paint. And like I said, nostalgic. Um, I remember yeah. back in the day hiding my mechs in lakes to cool down when they were overheating. Yes. <laughs> the glory yes. days of battle tech um but this is this is gonna be my i don't know why but this is my favorite i like this guy there's just something he reminds me of ed 209 from robocop <laughs> he does he's, he, he looks he does look a bit sinister he, he did Doesn't i mean I, I, it friend. was nice it was nice doing a bit of research because i'd forgotten all about the clans and the background and the law to battle tech mm. um so it was really nice um and I, they didn't take that long to paint sort of three or four nights here or there um yeah, I thought looking back, the I think the, 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 the I could have gone for a more funky color scheme. They're quite dull compared to some that I've seen, especially uh, the camouflage like scheme. It. Oh, cheers, Andy. I guess I did. I wanted, I thought I thought of a, a, a military, I'm gonna say like Rimmer now, a military <laughs> gray. <laughs> um, Leslie um, wants to know if you've uh, done your Huey yet. No, no. he's gonna <laughs> ask every single week. Every week, every and to be week fair, to be fair, he posted Leslie posted a really awesome unboxing of the Huey on, on my Facebook group as well. It's just something I've got to, I've, I've literally got to cut myself off from humanity and just sit in here and just work on that Huey without any distractions. Um, but I've got an excuse for why I wasn't working on my Huey, and that's because da da, I completed my German O group wow. battalion. <laughs> Yay, very that's nice, a lot of armor. That's um brilliant that's it's, cool it is and i really really enjoyed it if you want to see more of it there's a, there's a showcase video on my channel at the moment um as i go through y yes matt your work here is done yes <laughs> you swine you honestly um but what, what i said was i was gonna i was gonna take a break from painting 15 mil because of a i've been painting non-stop for four four weeks so what did i do i bought a soviet force now <laughs> so, I, did, I did. I did some test ones at the weekend. You can't really see them, and uh, not on the base. These were really, really, really quick to paint. Um, Alex's tutorial for painting um, 50 mil Soviets really, really helpful. Um, but this week, and um, for the foreseeable, I'm, I'm going to get these DAC finished. I'm going to go back to 28 mil uh, bolt action. I've got to get these finished, otherwise uh, they're not going to get done at all. And as usual. I've, well, I've got a, a, a truck as a transport, and so I'm doing it arse backwards as I normally do, and paint from the um sort of the outside, uh, the inside out. <laughs> and and, and <laughs> what make of truck is that? Who's made that? It's Warlord. Oh, okay, all right. I thought you were going to say Rubicon to set Dom off. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, my the the, uh, the douche and a half out I do with my Americans. That was a Rubicon kit, and that was lovely. Oh, it was so nice. Uh, John down. feels that uh, you going into BattleTech is just deserts the amount of stuff we've provoked us in the anarchy to buy that's what that's saying, isn't it? <laughs> to, um your to be fair, BattleTech needs more flags. <laughs> I don't know whether I'm gonna actually buy the game or buy more, but I really, really did enjoy painting those. Um 
And I, I, I may have been watching one or two bat reps on the internet or the inter. It's wobbles. happening. It's at inter the inter wobble. So no, it's yeah. it was really good. Just just paint something that I'd I've wanted to paint since I was, I was about thirteen. So we're going going back a fair few years mm. then. Um, mm. But to get to get and and the, the I've got to say it. The plastics are so much better than the metal ones we used to play with when I was younger. <laughs> in comparison, oh, no. I'm going to get hunted down and beaten now for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, like I said, a big, a big uh, to all you people that posted uh, your battle tech. <laughs> I've taken names. I've taken names. I'm not Matt and Tony. Well, do you know, if, it's any, if it's any consolation, yeah, you've actually inspired me to do some now. I'm just looking at hey! it. I'm, I'm going to go, when I leave here later, I'm going to go home and get some. That's the first time we've had a guest, we've had a guest come on and then leave, like to promote their thing and then left with something else. Something else <laughs> to do. Yeah. There They're we great. go. I love them. I'm going to get yeah, there. Cheers. They, I, I, they're really, really enjoyable. Um, and there's, what, what's not to like about painting big, bloody mechs? I mean, you know, even I'm them. looking at those thinking they look really cool. I've no idea what I use them for, but they do look really cool. <laughs> this time next week, Dom's painted the entire range. They've got yeah. them on there. What, what's oh. that, Dom? I've, I've painted six clans over the past seven days. Only 700 mechs. Yeah. Easy. Oh, done. Easy. Oh, done. easy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that, that, that was me. Like I said, this Quite week. Quite week. week. Oh, for the see, foreseeable I... future, I'm concentrating on my Deutsche Africa core. Um, uh, well, uh, my week awesome, started mate. out with good intentions um, and then fell apart, then came back together again and then went off in all sorts of weird directions. Um, so so miniature-wise, I finally finished my small unit of Varangian Guard for, um, oh, for the first then, Crusade. Nice. Oh, nice. Um, my, um, they, as, as I say, um, I don't really want to recount the experience of sticking these together, um, but I, they were a lot of fun to paint, and it was just a lot of fun to, to research, to be honest, and I, I went with the Saxon shield designs rather than the Byzantine ones, just because I, I really do, as I said earlier, like the idea that these are anger, these are Saxons that are, <laughs> that are in the uh, that are in the Varangian Guard, fighting either alongside or against the Normans, because of course they did fight each other a lot, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. so they've got some proof. So now I've just got to come up with some some rules for them in um, in Hail Caesar because I was going down. Oh yeah, they definitely be valiant. Yeah, they definitely have tough fighter. Oh, they definitely have two. And then by the end of it, I was like, they're just, they're too good. I need to go. I need to scale this back a little bit <laughs> <laughs> because um, they shouldn't be unkillable. But um, yeah, they were um, they were a lot of fun to do, especially the um, that chap at the front. I don't know why I always had this. I, I always make my leader sort of a, some kind of like white bearded chap at the front. I have noticed this is a. Sort of they're have a, a ferocious them. charge when they were going up against the um, the Normans or something. Yes, well, well, we, we need to decide what we're doing at uh, Crackcon, don't we? And if uh, these could feature, um, although they might, I might have other plans, but I won't. Oh, I was going to say every, every time I speak to you, Martin, you come up with another plan for Crackcon. At this rate, it's going to be a, a, a month long event. And about twenty mm. different games, so yeah. yeah, I think I think people would be up there, but no, they were they were a lot of fun to paint. So um, I I think I'm only probably about four or five units off a fairly decent sized game now for the, for the first crusade. Um, but I was um, I was lucky enough to be uh, visited by Tony West um, at the weekend. He came to stay with us on Friday because he was traveling back from Sheffield back to France. So we cracked out Dead Man's Hand, hey. Um, hey. Which, is, which is always always good fun, and he kicked the snot out of me. How quickly, um, how quickly did old mother hubbard get killed she was number one old mother yeah. hubbard went down like a sack of shit in the first <laughs> and, every and, uh, game that happens and, uh, her chicken she so old mother hubbard as you can see there in the blue dress in the middle um she, what happened was she it, that building on the left in the center left he had um two people in um one on top and one in there so she ran up and popped her shotgun through the window and missed at point blank range. She then she then got one through the head. This guy that did a bit of a Butch Cassidy ran out and killed. It was basically every time he went, it was move, aim, kill, move, aim, kill, move, aim, kill. And I and we were drinking, you know, having a glass of wine or, or a beer as we were playing this. And it was one of the most. It was a really nice game. It, I didn't. It wasn't filmed or nothing like that. It was just you know nice to have a have, have a chilled game. But I got the absolute 
shit kicked out of me. <laughs> I was sitting there at the end of it, kind, kind of going, I remember when, like, not many people played this game. <laughs> and, um, and it was fun. But, um, no, it was lovely. It was lovely to see him as well and catch up with someone from, um, so given from the, the fact group. he's in the military, it's only fair that he should kick the snot out. Of well, I imagine good. that, yes, his tactical, yeah, it, let's just say that his tactics compared to, say, when I play you or Ken are, are a lot... Um, well, your tactics, Martin, seem to be rush out and try and shoot down <laughs> anybody you can at point blank range I, I've and then seen wonder Westerns. why you get they down. don't run at people they <laughs> just run at people it's absolutely fine they run at people uh, and yes um, as, as Dom was alluded to I got a bit distracted on Friday I'm not going to sort of give out all the details now because there's a few things I want to do but basically what happened was I saw a picture and now I have a new project. Um, <laughs> and it wasn't even a picture of a model. It and was a front you cover give me book. grief. Give and, me grief. <laughs> and not only is it developed for that, it's developed into two new two new small armies, a new board, potentially some fit. And yeah, and it's gone off else. I was explaining it to Doc. It's exciting. I am excited for it. But I, I mean, it's magnificent. Me. But, you know. It's <laughs> a really tenuous way to uh, to, to get into it. But um, but yes, I'll um, I'll put something something up about that. But yeah, definitely a um, uh, something I wasn't expecting. I wasn't expecting to sit down on Friday night <laughs> and wake up on Saturday morning with loads of miniatures for a brand new uh, project. So, oh, no. <laughs> What have oh, I done? Um, but anyway, so there we go. So let's. I think it's um, it's about time we we moved on to the main reason um, that, uh, that that we that probably most people are watching and uh, and Andy's here, and that is Gangs of Rome, the new edition, which is on Kickstarter right now. And I, I checked the Kickstarter just before we came on, and you're, you're just approaching fifty k now. We are, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, and from a twelve k goal. So, um, yes, it, so yeah, it's crackers, that's fantastic. You know? um, so I, I guess the um, the question would be for anyone who's not heard of, of Gangs of Rome, what would be your what would be like your elevator pitch <laughs> for, um, <laughs> for, for Gangs of Rome um, to uh, to those who haven't um, experienced gang, it? Gang yet? fighting in the streets of Rome. There we go. There we go. Says it on the tin. I suppose, <laughs> <laughs> I I suppose if you've ever uh, seen um, the season two of Rome. Um, where they're, yeah, they're doing so all the, the Aventine stuff, it's uh, yeah, that, that's a real, that's a real good connection. Uh, what it re, during the Republican period in Rome, uh, there was Senate people going for the Senate and people of power, you know, from the noble houses. They didn't want to be seen to get their hands dirty, so what they did was they would have a stable of gang fighters or have people, you know, ruffians on the street who would go out and and do their bidding for them. Uh, to try and stitch up their opponents and this is what the game's trying to emulate really so uh on a one on a one-on-one -on -one fight you just you just fight out a game in the campaign rules you're actually a senator of rome or a nobleman of rome and you trying to further your own political aims by uh doing lots of dirty dodgy stuff behind mm -hmm. your gang and that's that's the kind of feel of the game I I've I, I I nabbed um I nabbed this picture just to give people sort of oh. an idea of the uh the, well yeah what's the noise that Steve just made is pretty, pretty much what I was doing <laughs> as I was scrolling scrolling through the Kickstarter because that is it, that is seriously the impressive is amazing. Just, oh Jeez. my word we we're very lucky uh, when we when we looked at Gangs of Rome it's about five years ago when we first did it and it was the first game that Futsal did. And uh, being good friends with Steve Cumming from Sarissa, uh, I just I, I just mentioned that we were doing this game, of, and I said, "Oh, could you do me a couple of buildings for Rome?" Uh, and he said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll have a look. Come back next week." And I, I turned up the following week, and they'd actually made Rome. It was like thirty <laughs> buildings. <laughs> and it was like, Rome wow, wasn't built know, in a day, but yeah, it, but it, it was, it was built in a week. <laughs> yeah, uh, and you can go. I mean, I'm not, you know. You go on their website if you haven't seen it. Their Streets of Rome range. Well, it's just amazing. I've got this, you know, and that's, that's from it. You know, yeah, because obviously they've got this. These this building here. This is why I saved this picture because honestly, you, if you haven't seen them, guys, go and look at Cerise's website or or on the Futsal site and you'll see these. Um, but th these are the buildings that I love the most. The ones that are under construction, which is yeah. just madness. Yeah. Um, I I, lo I well, love these. I actually I actually have these. I just haven't built them. <laughs> Well, the, 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 the kind of story behind them is Rome was always catching fire, burning down, being pulled down. It was thrown up. So there was always bits of it under development. So 
what we've kind of written, you know, it's to make the game playable. We do the other, the other buildings are good. You can go on the roof, you can go inside them. But having buildings like these with flat top roofs and, and mm. the, the scaffold, et cetera, it adds that uh, elevated feel, that 3D feel to the game. Definitely. So we've, we've written that in as well, that the part of the reason that these gangs are out there is they're trying to claim the new territory, the new areas. And what a better way than it's actually under construction to show those areas. That's very cool because I, I remember seeing one of your um, your boards at Salute, and I think it was when you released the first box set. Um, was it, is that Blood on the Aventine? Mm. The first, Blood the on the Aventine, yeah. Um, and you had the, the big crane. And you had all the, you had this whole area under construction. Oh, then you yes. had the other bit, and and that that was where I I sort of had, um, I had a couple of demo demo turns with my mate, and then it was mm. straight to buy the box. <laughs> and then, <laughs> so this, he, he bought that one. I, I've got the bread and circuses. I've still got the um, I've got the um, the bakery. Uh, just, yeah, yeah. Up, yeah. just up behind me which is um fantastic and um so i guess one of the <clears throat> one of the big um the things about the kickstarter is you've got a a new rule book i've actually got my I've got my original my 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 little yeah, yeah. Book here because yeah. um you you did something very cool with the kickstarter is you put this this up which not a lot of people do when they come to second editions or new editions that essentially describes the differences between the two. And the main one yeah. being um, that we were going from, what was it? 32 pages to how many? 200. <laughs> <laughs> There's a certain theme here, Andy, with your rules. I mean, you know, <laughs> the other one's yeah. going from 70 odd pages too many and now 200. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but it's not too, let, let me, uh, you know, just uh, spell it out really, and be clear. I've had I thought two hundred pages, lots of different things would be really cool, but lots of people have gone, no, it was thirty two pages. How dare you make it really complicated? And we we haven't done that. What we've done is uh, the core rules are probably about thirty two, thirty four pages still. Mm -hmm. So you you can take those rules, take those away, learn gangs of Rome, play those thirty four pages worth of rules. I think it's even about. 12 or 14 pages of just text uh, as in a manuscript and it's really straight we've actually simplified it we've made the game i think uh, a lot easier to get going and start playing mm. all the extra stuff is uh advanced rules so uh, tables to build your own fighters to roll up build your own gangs there's a scenario uh tables where you can roll up to to generate scenarios, oh, night fighting, scaffolding, you know, dodgy scaffolding, uh, buildings falling down. There's the vigilantes who turn up, who are the police. You know, how do they work? Different mobs, different denizens of Rome. So all of this has to go in. And all of a sudden, those 30-odd pages become 200 pages. And that's not even, we're not even talking about the campaign yet. It's a, one of the big things that people wanted for Gangs of Rome uh, was a campaign section. Mm. So then we've got a whole, you know, section on on the campaign. So the book the book is core advanced campaign. Right. So that's why it's so big. We tried to get it all in. So so you know, it's is got it, some is it hard back as well. Is it hardback? It is now, yeah, because people kept throwing money at us. So we <laughs> so we got that. <laughs> well, so because you've really taken no, care of everyone. Great. So for so returning, so people who like myself um, yeah. and a couple of my, my friends who who have got the previous box sets and have already got their mobs um, and their gangs, yeah. you've got the, you've got this sort of pledge level for the veteran where you you get the new book and you get the new the yeah. new tokens, um, yeah. and then for anyone who's Sort of jumping on board now. You've got the uh, essentially the uh, the beginners one where you cut, but you you get the mobs and you get all the yeah. dice and, and the tokens yeah. and the mob mechanic is something very unique to this game. And I and I like has that changed much in the new edition or is that essentially the same as it, it was originally? It, well, a couple of things. Just just on these two pledges, we didn't want people moving from version one to version two. We wanted everything to port over. We didn't want mm -hmm. people to think like they had to buy everything again. So all of, if you've got a range, of, you know, a collection of uh, Gangs of Rome miniatures, you just need the book really and the tokens and the way you go. And you can just take the book and play with what you've got. Yeah. Uh, and that includes the mobs. So we have slightly changed the, the way the mob mechanic works. We haven't changed the thing that makes what people think that makes them really cool is this idea where your fighter can disappear into the mob and then come out of another mob. Yeah. So on, so you have all of these, if you've not played before, you have these different bases on the table of mobs and you, 
there's a blend action they can blend and then pop out of another mob the next turn and carry on their go so that that's not changed but what we have changed is the way that they uh they're actually moved in the way they work in the game in, in, yeah. in version one at the end of the turn there was a housekeeping phase and it's quite a neat mechanic you'd roll uh the the d6 which were the roman numerals and if it had a v on it it, mean, it meant they moved yes <laughs> um, four five six they moved one two three they didn't and it followed the direction of the arrow so you could that's the way you move so it was, very, it was a very neat mechanic but what we found was that uh all the mobs randomly for some reason kind of just dispersed the game so <laughs> they would start in the middle of the table and then you know eight times out of ten nine times out of ten all your mobs would move away and you they just didn't become useful at all in the game so what we've done is we found uh we've actually added a token for the mobs into the bag now on the draw oh, okay yeah so you you have as half half the amount <coughs> of mob tokens in the bag as you do mobs rounded up so then as you draw if your token's drawn you get to move but the bag passes. So if I if I've got the bag and I draw a mob token, I can actually activate the mob. Right. So they okay. you can actually use yeah. them to help you. So there's two ways to activate them. You can try and agitate them, and you roll the <laughs> dice. And on a one two they panic. Three four they just carry on watching and milling around. And a five six they get angry and attack the closest fighter. So you can try and agitate them, or you can just move them in any direction you want. Uh, D six. So you got. Roll, roll a dice they move in that direction so what happens we seem to happen now is you can have your your gang fighter or mer, uh, blend with a mob you'll move another mob where you want it later and then the next turn you can pop out so you can start to manipulate where the mobs are on the table and that that's, that's made cool. a big difference yeah mm -hmm. it really it, it it gives you the same feel and the same sort of mechanic <coughs> but now the mm -hmm. mobs are more involved and you can put them, you know, they you can use them to block. Uh, I was going to ask the opponent, yeah, all of yeah. that stuff. So you can agitate, them. get get them in the way, and then they've got to come through them, and then you can agitate. Okay, them yeah, they, it, trap them. absolutely, because awesome. we we we've changed the way that the fighters activate as well. That's the biggest change. So right. part of the way that you activate is you have to go in straight lines. So it's a number of straight lines. You know, it's not running jerkily around. <laughs> yeah. you, can't, you can't you can't run around the mob. So if you wanted to stop someone uh, coming towards you, you could put a mob base between you and that fighter that looks like they're going to come at you. So it actually, you can use it to block that and block line of sight. So all of a sudden, they, they really do get more involved. It's made a huge difference. So it's the same idea, but a, a massive change to the rules. For um, for people watching who who haven't played Gangster MD, the, the standard table size is three by three, isn't it? That's, it is three by three. But... So, it is but three elevation. by three, but also <laughs> elevation. And we judging we, by those models, about three by six high. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's through the aqueducts. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They're about eight inches. But we, because what the the other big change we've moved, changed is uh, to the rules is the way the mechanic of how you move around and use the terrain. Because again, mm -hmm. there's so much really cool terrain, and I think in version one it was quite complex the way to do it. So you'd say, well, I'd measure this bit. That's about this far. My agility is this. Work out what my roller dice. Then I can do it. You know, and it kind of it was a bit janky. I thought it. it and what we've just done is you you create what's called an action stack, mm -hmm. and TM. Obviously, we trademark that, but uh, <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's one of it's one of those names that uh, while play testing it, we can't come up with a better name. So it's called an actions from a stack of actions. So your your fighter can do one to four actions. You choose how many you want to do. So you want two, three, or four, and then you just choose from the list. So you can move, uh, climb, jump, push, blend, do those bite. You know those kind of things. And then you just say, right, I, this this fighter is going to do three actions. He's going to move, move, jump. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you then put your you say where the, that's going to take place. You roll your agility dice. So if you have seven dice, you roll seven dice and you're looking for successes, which are four, fives, or sixes. Anything will be on. If you get three successes, you can carry out that full activation because you've said you want to do three actions. So you need to get three successes. Mm -hmm. If you get two, you can do the first two. If you get one, you can do the first one. So it doesn't end if you don't do it. You can only go as far as if you said you're going to go. 
However, if you fail while you're climbing or if you fail while you're jumping, you actually fall. Ooh. So there's, that, there's <laughs> a risk, risk and reward. So I like that. And the client, it, it just and it makes it so simple. So you say, I'm going to move to there. I'm going to run up the ladder. It doesn't matter how long the ladder is. It's just a movement. So you go up to the top of the ladder and then you move. So it just keeps it very simple. Mm. And it, it, it's just changed the game totally. So now you can, everybody's everywhere. It's like, you know, watching hamsters, you know, on one of those indoor <laughs> climbing frames. They're all over the place. So it, it, it makes it very simple. And it's that, do I push it? Do I not push it? If I decide I want to do four actions, but I only manage to do two, I get what we stress. So you get stress tokens. Uh, and what every stress token you do, you remove one agility. So it makes it harder. You're kind of like losing, losing the chance to do it. So yeah, yeah. but but cool. if you if you do a stack, if you say this is my stack, I've got two uh, actions in there, and I roll them and I pass, it clears all your stress. So it's every stress token you've got. So you can play it safe to clear stress tokens as well. So it it, it just. All of us, and it, you can see I'm quite animated about it because it's so <laughs> fun to play. It's just made it so dynamic. So then if you throw into that as well, the fact that you can throw people off the top of places, yes, you know, you can, you can, you can, you can throw them into the mob. You can chuck sacks on people below you. You can push <laughs> carts into people. It, all these things, because that, that simple mechanic, that simple action stack makes it a real, a bunch of really, complex and cinematic activations really simple because you just it, it's like one two three four two things three things actions you yeah. say what you're going to do everything you could possibly want to do will fail into those fall into those actions bang you're away and all of a sudden it's just it's just so cinematic that sounds love it cool. love it that, that sounds, sounds really good you better watch out uh, andy um certain person may be in the oh chat. gosh uh, uh, <laughs> well, we funnily enough, I was I was just going to come on to some of the uh, the, the new models that, <laughs> that are available. So, because um, I've got something I really enjoyed with the first edition was the the get you buy your gang fighter, you got your token, your cards, your you know they were really yeah. nice, really nice packs. Um, and but obviously along with this one, you've got a, a number of of new uh, miniatures. Now we actually sort of been have been sort of flashing these up as you've been um, sort of previewing them. But I thought I'd put them up again for for anyone who's missed them or has tuned in uh, specifically. I guess this is uh, you're here for the gangs of Rome. Um, so obviously you've got um, guys that like the Vigilists. So oh, these cool. are essentially non-player characters. Is that right? Yeah. They're, so they, they're, yes. They. They. They're Rome's watchmen, really. They were firemen and police, but it depended, you know, how many denarii you have, really, for how how helpful they would be if your house was on you fire. You them off. <laughs> you, like oh, yeah, you could pay them off. To start. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> but in, it, in the game, what, how these guys turn up is, depending on how agitated the mobs become, you have a vigil aid counter. It's like a countdown. So uh, depending on what your, your the countdown is, your roll to see what the number is, how many mm. times the mobs become agitated, the countdown goes down. When you get to zero, the vigilate turn up and they try to carry oh, your gang members cool. off. <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Brilliant. That that is that that's fantastic. Um, and then, um, oh, sorry, that wasn't the one. Oh, I, I, I love these. Guys. But this fr um, Dom put this one up a few weeks ago, and some people in the yeah. chat, I think, were quite disturbed <laughs> by by the, uh, by the by the one at the top. Was it Socus? Um, I don't think yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean that that is um, that they are cool. So and also are these are these um, again are these sort these of, are um, these are all Paul these are all Paul Hicks. They, they, yeah. This was a conversation we had, and I said. Uh, I want these guys, these these actors. They're like jobbing actors, and they mm. they they're they're good, but they they don't make enough coin. So they're jobbing actors by day, and they're uh, they're gang fighters by night, and uh, <laughs> they wear their <laughs> masks. They, they, they wear their masks, so you don't know who they are. So they could, could be. I, I thought you were going to say they just follow your your people around like a really annoying mime, and they just, just <laughs> give them away or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Why my so mind? 
I just I, I like the guy in particular at the, bot- at the bottom who's like crying fake tears, you know, because he's obviously the tragedy mask. Oh, boo hoo! Before he stabs you. <laughs> yeah, oh, these are fa- um because you have um in the in the first edition, I see you had um obviously these these other non-player characters. So you had the the one that I was always getting. I don't know why I bought him. I mean, obviously he's a lovely figure, thank you. But um, it was the <laughs> essentially the Medicae. Uh, and I went up to him, and you roll a dice to see, and he just killed me every single time. Every single time, it's on, yeah. you know, on a roll of roll of a what you know he, he heals or uh, you know you a healer. Or, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't do anything, or on a roll of a one, you know, he, he just cuts your femoral artery and you die <laughs> in front of it. And that, that's what happened to me. Um, so if you've got you've got uh, if you've got some more of those coming, because you um, yeah, there's the some more inkler. They're, they're the they're the inkler. They're like Dennis. Yeah. They they can either help you or not. And obviously in your case, he didn't help you very much. He never helped me. I bought him, and I was like I was like this. this He's never done what what I wanted him to do, but I'm going to put him up, and I know we talked. Yeah, about here he is. This, this is, is my the leper, yeah. The leper <laughs> which yeah, that's so, that's, he, so how yeah, how does he work? How does he work? He he's on he's on the board. The the mob obviously won't go near him, so oh. it, they they will actually go around him. So it will be like he, he works like an area control element, and obviously <laughs> your fighters as well prefer get distracted by him. So he's on there. He he's really just going to stop you going in places. That's that's, that's, awesome. a, that's a lovely. That's a great mechanic <laughs> and and a lovely, if somewhat disturbing, model. But again, it, when we yeah. when we put when we put this up, um, it's good. Um, uh, David is. Uh, he looks like he's about to break soon. Um, yeah. is, good, uh, yeah. good, good, and then, uh, and then, uh, yep, yeah, Steve, Steve is on the same one. <laughs> no, 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 but, um, and you've got this. Um, I haven't, guys, I must say, there's a link to the Kickstarter down below, um, in the in the description. So, so go and check that out. Um, you can also, there's a there's a big gangs of Rome community on um, on Facebook as well, and you can go and see that there are a lot of these, um, these chaps, aren't there? You, there's a lot of people, you, there's lots of different people you can interact with. I mean, I just talked about the Medicaid, but there's um, I, I can't. Oh, there's the butcher. There's the, Cren- yeah. Crenchus, the butcher. He's like out looking for sausage meat, so he'll uh, <laughs> he'll, he'll, he'll <laughs> the off. Uh, there's there's uh, there's like a pirate, a Sicilian pirate, and he's got a, oh, uh, God. a, a whole menagerie of animals. So he's got a baboon and a parrot with him, and the baboon's really vicious. So you don't want to go near him. <laughs> I did see that. Oh, good dear. My other half is listening. She's just hidden my wallet. Mate, that's what, uh, that's, if you're watching on your phone, you haven't you got the app that just glitters what PayPal's yeah. like. <laughs> um, um, so, yeah, there's, there's a whole load of them. Uh, I like Rufinius, whose uh, only friends are a basket of scorpions. So if you go near him, he'll throw scorpions at you. <laughs> that's funny. Um, and then one of the, um, I think one of the ones I saw in the new one is—is is it the the head of the the vigilist, like the captain? The, oh yeah, yeah, the, the centurion yeah, looking yeah. guy. He, he he looks very um looks very angry. So um, he's very he's he, very he's he's very nasty. And having him on the board, he can obviously control the mobs. He can control the other vigilants. And also in the advanced rules, you can add him with four vigilants into a ba- into a base. So you can then have a base, you know, like a like a mob of them running. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that sounds especially at night time because that was when they they would come out. So that adds another element uh, as well. So because obviously we're, we're chatting about these, you build up your gang normally. So do you mm. um, just for the, the guys who are watching? Do you purchase the these these NPCs into your gang, or do you just agree with your opponent how many to put on the board, or do you just throw them on and just like populate Rome? Yeah, there's different different ways of doing it. The right, uh, the mobs, uh, you can decide how many you want to have on. Three or four bases is a good number, or there's a table to roll on if you want to use that. And for, for the campaigns, we'd encourage you to roll that for the mobs. Uh, the mobs are like moving terrain, so the more you have, the better, I think. Uh, for the Inkler, the Inkler, again, they can be de- uh, s- certain scenarios or decide if you, you can bring them. Uh, you can decide if you want to use them, but there's a limit to how many you can have. Otherwise, it would just get a bit bonkers having them on the board, uh, all playing off against each other. Uh, and the Inkler move as well in the same way as a mob. You know, you can control them to move them, or they'll have rules to move. And it's more of a uh, interaction based on how close you are to them. It's a proximity uh, mm. to activate them. Uh, <laughs> with with the Rome's most wanted, which are the players, the Oscan players, you can recruit yeah. them. They could be part of your gang. The same with uh, the daughters of Sappho, uh, the sons of Orcus, etc. These guys are called Rome's most wanted, and they're they're known to the authorities in Rome. You know, these are the 
the guys, if you really got, you know, it's a bit like the A team. If you've got a job and no one else can do it, you know, you go and get the Oscar <laughs> players in, you know, uh, or, or, or or the Sons of Walkers. So, but you you can take one of them. You can have three of them. You can pick, you know, pick and choose and have them in. Uh, so that's cool. But also, your gang itself wants to become part of the Rome's Most Wanted, and that's so. So you as a senator are trying to, you know, do your political machinations, your gang yeah. members want to become nor- notorious. So uh, the more notorious they become, obviously, the more they get known. So it's harder for them to uh, blend with the mobs. It's harder for, uh, unless they're in the district that they are, and obviously the mobs are scared of them, so they'll let them in. Uh, and, uh, you know, but the vigilates will turn up. If you're notorious, the, the vigilate count will go down quicker. Uh, that's cool. I like this. I like the sound of that. Dom Dom's already is is, is ticking over in his head. I go <laughs> seeing him right there. Um, la 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 la. Not no, this. No, 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 that's it. So what I thought I, I probably should have shared this. So this is um these are examples of some of your gangs, aren't they? I mean, you could you could add this on now. Are these um? Now correct me if I'm wrong. Are these multi part? You can you can ask. They were they were like, initially, yeah. uh, mm. and one of the feedback that we got was people got frustrated uh, with. Because uh, like all these things, you know, being a modeler, I'm like, oh, the more bits, the better. You know, you can make your own thing. And everybody's like, oh, I don't want to stick all these bits together. So that's Dom. Taste, <laughs> that's that's you've just, you just <laughs> read my mind, Andy. Exactly. Well done. Yeah. So we've, we've taken all of the uh, initial 18 fighter characters and we've made single piece figures out of them. So they're all now single. Obviously, you'll have to stick a shield on, etc. But in most cases, they're all single piece. We've kept all the bits, so for those who are converters, they want to cut off a head or an arm or whatever, they can stick those bits on. But uh, just just for ease of play, we've made them all single piece now. That that is awesome. I mean, I've, I've, I can see in the chat if was just going if they needed more re- any more reasons. I think you might have just uh, just, <laughs> t- just t- t- tipped them over um, slight, slightly onto that. Um, I'll share this one. Obviously, we've got Paul in the chat and you sent it to me. This is uh, this is hot off the press, right? This hasn't even made. Yeah, yeah. He sent me it tonight, color, right? He sent you tonight. Well, tell me now, so I shouldn't have shared it. I bet. He won't. He won't. But we'll, we'll put it up. But we'll blame you. It's it's fine. He'll be. He's on next week. He can then. He can. T- well, or maybe he won't come now. That will be the uh, thing. Um, so, so these these guys are, with, with version two figures. now. Uh, version two there's actually fighter classes. So these two are brawlers, and there's brawlers, there's thieves, there's acrobats, and there's like leaders. So you can you can recruit these different uh, types in. So with brawlers, obviously they're they're like your tanks. These are the guys who are going to protect the rest of your rest of you guys. Uh, and the th- your acrobats, you'd obviously send them up the 3D terrain to go and do something acrobatic. Of course, uh, the thieves are good for stealing objectives or equipment off your opponent. So we we thought we'd actually add some character in. Oh, that's very um, that's very cool. I, I know I know things. Steve is in particularly in love with the boxing uh, uh, chap as he uh, it reminds him of a certain video game character. Which oh, yeah. <laughs> that's the first thing I, when I when I saw that earlier. That's the first thing that sprung to my mind. Yeah, yeah I agree. I, I totally agree. And um, but it, it, the boxing gloves. Paul was telling me they're from. I think you'll correct me if I'm wrong. But they they're actual Roman boxing gloves from the Ashmolean in Oxford. Uh, the museum in Oxford. So we've actually gone with the real thing. That is that is very very cool, and <laughs> it's just they are they just there is just lo- loads of character. Um, what I'll do is we'll come on to this bit just because now I know people are excited about this because I saw the comments in the Kickstarter. I've seen the comments in the in the uh, in the group. Um, mm. But if we got, uh, can you talk about this? <laughs> the, yeah, uh, of course. The, yeah, the yeah. plastic um, sort of set with um, with War Games Atlantic. Which has now yes. been unlocked. It has, yeah. We uh, we we've been in discussion with War Games Atlantic for a little while uh, about different options, and we this to me was like a no brainer. And the, the the real question we had was, can we make gang fighters and mob from the plastic box set? And if that we can do that, then we're away, you know. And they they yeah, no problem at all. So the idea is, this is a citizen, as it says, citizens of Rome box set uh and there's going to be lots of choice so there'll be six figures you'll be able to make six figures on a frame we've made uh torsos and leg and because it's a skirmish game 
we when we wanted some choice there's torsos and legs there'll be about 12 heads on the frame uh, a, a selection of legs a selection of torsos loads of arms including unarmed arms you know so without weapons there'll be uh, some civilian stuff like amphora uh, sacks but also lots of stabby knives and bits and pieces so there'll be i think it's five five frames in a box so you'll be able to get 30 figures so that will give you three mobs and it will give you uh two gangs from a box i think so yeah so uh, and it's off we push the button so uh that's rob, that's fantastic rob, it is rob mcfarland's sculpting them and uh, the plan is to have some renders to show before we finish not today, but before we finish the Kickstarter. <laughs> no, I was going to say, yeah, no, really, no. Really. How long is it? <laughs> and uh, here they are. How, yeah, that's and, and as if by magic. Um, how long have we actually got left on the Kickstarter? That's the one thing I, I forgot to Until check. the end of the month. So it's never yeah. 11 days. So it, it's gone off like a rocket. And, you know, we're in that stage now going, yeah, oh God, we got, we, do we, you know, what do we do now? We're waiting for pictures. There's some figures, extra figures that I've asked Paul to do, which he's sculpting, which we like, the brawlers. So there's some other bits and pieces. We've got another stretch goal to add uh, tomorrow. What it's going to be is, and again, this is, no one knows this yet, but I've had uh, a set of bases made, which uh, we're going to give away as STLs. And in the middle of the base is a the puddles taken out. Oh. So all the figures, the figures all fit into them. Uh, and there's a topper, so you can cut the topper down around their feet or you can put some stones in or whatever you want. Or the topper will just press on top of the base and you'll have a complete cobbled base. So, oh, so we're going to... That's really we, nice. I should get rid of this roller. Because I bought yeah. the roller for me just purely for this. There's so much swearing involved it, in it. When we, when we first did this, the, you know, STLs and, and printing wasn't yeah. such a thing. But now it is. So we, we've also had a Roman numeral 1 to 10 on, on the bases. So you can use them as identifiers. And because people will want to change out their gangers and do different things, we're just going to give the file away. So you can just print as many as you want for your use. Uh, and if you want us to print them, we'll, we'll, we'll do something as well. I've got to say, uh, those plastics, I am intrigued. Colour me interested in the plastics. Um... Andy, don't let them have them. He'll put, do something ungodly with them. <laughs> I, You'll have I tufts coming got... out of every I orifice. They'll be out of every orifice. I wouldn't I do loads, that to loads them. Of, no. Loads of things you can do with them, I think. Yeah. It's like Spartacus Revolt. You could yes. do, you know, helots for Spartans with them. There's a lot, lot of choice, I think, you could, you could make <laughs> from it. Tommy, fancy and gonna, this is rebellion for the game stay. <laughs> I think they'll, I think they'll be able to kit bash with the other War Games Atlantic stuff as well. So, oh, fan mm. fantastic! Well, mm. I mean, <laughs> I would say, I mean, I remember when you came on before and you talked about all the things that you wanted to do with Games of Rome and and move it on, and it sounds like you really you, you've been able to do that, you know. You, but is it again a case of there's still more that you want to do? Did you have to cut it back a little bit, or is it? Is this gang uh, I, room as, you, as you as you see it. I think I, mean. I think I think uh, being able to add a comprehensive campaign uh, section to the book will make a massive difference to the game. So the idea is we it's, there was uh, three key things we wanted to do. One was make it really accessible and easy to play. So the core of it is really easy. Once you've got your head around this action stack and the way it moves and blending with the mobs, yeah. your way, you know. Uh, the combat's the same, you know, we've kept all the stats the same. So if you've got all the fighter cards, they'll all port over. It's just a way that they work. They work differently in the game now, and that's all. So all, all of that stuff will come across. The feel of it is the same. So that was really important. That was point one. We wanted an advanced section to make it interesting. So you could then, and, and each of those sections have been written uh, in isolation. Uh, yeah. Not as in isolation from the game, but as in isolation of, do I want to use night fighting rules or don't I? Do yeah. I want to use the dodgy scaffolding rules or don't I? So you can plug into your cool rules any part of that advanced rules that you want to do. And then for those who want to play a campaign, bang, there's a, a whole campaign section. And you can, the campaign will run, and this is the thing that was really key, you, the campaign will run uh, indefinitely if you want to. And we wanted to make it so... 
if I'd been playing gangs of Rome for five years and I've got my gang and it's been through the mill and you're a new player that turns up, the game that we'll actually play on the tabletop is balanced. Yeah. So you, your gang fighters don't uh, get better. You know, like you have that idea. I don't want to name the name, Necromunda, where your, your <laughs> fight just get totally out of control really quickly. So if I play yeah. loads of games of Necromunda, my gang is so much better than anybody else's. It's the resource. Having having a gang that's played more, you have more a- access to more resource, but the game that you play is balanced. Right. So that's really that's clever. The way that, it works. That's a clever yeah. idea. I like that. That's a really clever So you can, you can play indefinitely or you can play uh, a number of turns to a fixed goal. So easy in, lots of stuff to add, longevity. And that was that was the things we wanted to get from it. Fantastic. And of course, yeah, and it's it's well, like I say, it's said at the start, you busted you busted through the goal and now you now you're just going for it. So that is absolutely fantastic. Was there anything you wanted to do that you really just couldn't work out the mechanic of or just didn't kind of work how you wanted it to? Oh, that's a good question. Uh no, I think one of the, I think one of the things that we did early on, which I learned a lot from, was we we had too many good ideas and we tried mm-hmm. to cram them all in. Right. So what what you end up with then is a game that doesn't flow very smoothly. You know, lots of great lots of great things like uh, in the original one where there was this this bit where you could pray, mm-hmm. or you had the Orcus where your dice changed and and all of these bits individually that were really good. But what we found when we went back and played it quite a bit was it made the game quite disjointed. So it's the other way around. We we took loads of stuff out to make it yep. as simple as possible. And, the you know, the goal was just to make that core really strong yep. so everything else could hang off it. That so sense, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty... I'll tell you what I would like... Sorry, Dom. I would like to do. I would like to have gone and taken it somewhere else, but it has to be Gangs of Rome first. Ah, you know, so there could be a similar kind of. Uh, I'm trying to think. What supplement, would it be? say, or yes. something like that, where you can go to different cities. There's rule. There's rules where you can take it outside the city. So you know, a lot of the, a lot of the noble people lived in villas. You know, like farming mm. villas outside. Yeah, yeah. So you can go and attack a villa, and there's rules for fighting outside of the city as well. So again, I'm just thinking about Titus Pullo when he goes and kills Cicero in his, in his, <laughs> yeah. in his, in his villa out, out in there. This this is all fantastic. Well, what I think we'll do is right. We'll we'll give you a bit of a bit of a breather for for a second because okay. um, there's a lot of people here that need to go and spend some money. Um, <laughs> which I, can, I can I can see see that someone's just put up gangs of Londinium. Absolutely, <laughs> Absolutely. yeah. Absolutely. Do that. Why, why not? Um, so what I what I feel we'll do is if we because we there's a fair bit of news there's um but before we do that uh well Dom I'll let you do it you you can click the the thing oh hang on then the thing the power the the power the power I have (laughs) round here god damn uh where we are there we go hold on to your ear caps ear caps. So no so silly. That's the music that's playing when those actors are following you around, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what's going on. Um, Dom, do you want to uh, do you want to kick things off? Because, okay, uh, let's go. Let's kick through it. There is a lot. There's a hell of a lot. Um, I think we showed part of this last time, um, but this is uh, Reconquer's April lineup. I know. I mean, just. I, just awesome. Well, there's four. He, he's mixing so, so they're heavy infantry, but yes. there's four Andalusians, four yeah. uh, Moors, and four sort of something else, Normanish. Type and, and, things. and he decided let's just mix them together. And then he then he put this amazing post on Facebook where he explained all of his references. It was so long. It was like an essay. It was amazing the research. Um, but what's cool about this set is they're all open handed, so they come they come with a weapon pack, so you yep. can arm them. However, you, however, you, however you see fit, yeah. and whatever, and and they are pretty much interchangeable for so yeah. many different. Uh, it's just awesome. Ah, um, everything's going cowboy at the moment. Sorry, where you're sitting at the moment, Andy, but uh, the Sorry. rivals' war bases um, have some new <laughs> uh, have some new western buildings out. 
Uh, so there's a bunkhouse they've launched. I think these are coming out of Salute, I think he said. Um, Pony Express. Oh, that's, that's cool. Rather like nice. That. I like, I like that. that. Yeah, that's cool. Um, Trading Post and the Last Railway one. Halt, which I think is really neat as well. So I, I do like the simplicity of their built their ba their buildings for for an idiot like me who is incompetent in constructing anything. <laughs> um, I think that they're really they're dom proof. I should, I should put them <laughs> in. There. Um, and uh, I mean, for me, the biggest problem of the week was the Perry's again. Um, again, well, this is something. We, before you go, you show it. We've talked about this quite a lot, haven't we? We <sighs> yes. said why that there are older ranges of ottomans mm -hmm. and then they they did this which no, did anyone really know this was coming it came okay. out nowhere absolutely well, as far as i know i mean it came out the prairie's heads obviously um Don't and apparently they were wait oh. they were apparently waiting for a decent reference book was what they said was what they were waiting for for these i, mean, that's, they, I love it that that's that's what holds them back Quick, everyone just give them all their reference books to <laughs> i mean just what... unbelievable figures um that's I mean, cool. if these were plastic, I think they would be selling thousands of them. Um, metal may slow people down. I love the metal myself, but uh, I can see these being very... I mean, those those oh, they're lovely. Oh, they're aren't nice. they amazing? And they're so colourful as well, these figures. That's what I love. Oh, that, oh I might have to go and buy something else. <laughs> Look at I that. mean, these, these are just... And they, they are normally they just bring out a couple of a uh, couple of sets. They've gone absolutely potty with this lot. I mean, there's loads of them. So yeah, um, I apologise, but it's their fault, not mine. Um, so there you go. That's they're out, and I just they they're definitely going to be part of my future. Uh, <laughs> I love it how you just resigned yourself. You didn't even just yeah, they're there. Uh, I'm it's not even going to try and pretend, just... Martin. That's that's it. They're, 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 oh, they're going to happen. Not, you're not even going to put up a pretense of willpower. That it's just, just going to happen. It's, inevitable, it's, inevitable. It's, it's just inevitable, Steve. You got to bow to, <laughs> bow to the inevitability of it, and that's going to happen. So you know, just embrace it. That's what I say. Uh, for the 20 mil fans out the, there, Eureka. Uh, awesome. have done some really nice BEF Ooh, nice. figures. Um, I think I've copied that. Oh, no, there's, there's another one. And squad figures as well. I think they look really, really good. They look 20, lovely. For 20 mil. Um, and, Steve, do you want to talk about... Um, <laughs> I, don't really, I, oh, I just stumbled upon it today on Twitter. That is... that. So that's from um, Michael at Oatswan from so Burrows and Badgers. Just... I have no words for how awesome that is. It's, it's just, just, it's just brilliant. I just, I have a thing about that tail. I think it's just something about that just makes. I, <laughs> I don't know why. That's your favorite thing about the model. Oh, just it's just brilliant. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. But he didn't stop there, did he? Because then he brought no, out. He's... Then he's shown off these. <laughs> oh. You need something to stop it, don't you? I suppose that's, that's true. Point. Yeah, yes, good point. Good I point. see the game designer come out there. Got to have a counteract <laughs> to the the giant bear. Um, I just mean, unbelievable. Figures. I love it. I love his stuff. They're amazing. I mean, look at that. Look at that. So I believe they're out for well, he's he said he was designing them for a game at Salute. I believe so, yes. So one hopes that um you'll be able to buy them there. I would imagine that will be the case. So I'm yeah. sure he I'm sure he won't mind me saying I've heard from him. He is the bear the bear hopefully is gonna go into retail. Oh, nice. <laughs> Is it a cocaine bear? <laughs> it can do whatever it likes with that size of bear. <laughs> Bloody hell. It can take whatever substance. Um, I will be wandering along if I get to salute to that stand. I'll have it, bear. May I'm be coming. Yeah. I'm, rel I'm relying on you, Dom, because I can't be there. So you you have to go. You, you need to go there. <laughs> I'm going to convince my daughter to have her birthday shenanigans the next day because then I can go to salute and then go. Is to it the same birthday. day? Is it the same it, day? It, yeah, it's the same yeah, weekend. My, yeah, my, wife's, my wife's. Yeah, birthday. my wife mm. and my wife's birthday is on the 22nd, so I can't. Mm. That's yeah, it. I'm, I'm, like, that's 20, it. 23rd like, for a start. And it's, so. a, mm. it's a fairly big one as well, so it's not even like, a, can I go? And then we do the thing in the evening. No, I'm I'm on party. Well, I'm on logistics ferrying people around duties. Um, <laughs> so uh, that's that's my one. So yes, I'm relying on salute. By I've got your long shopping list as well as mine, have I? Okay. <laughs> I'm sending out multiple things. I'm sending a shopping list to you, then a separate one to other people. So that way, 
if you're ill, at least somebody might get the other. The other <laughs> what I like about that, no, if we if we went back in time about eighteen months and we said to Dom, Dom, by the way, no salute twenty twenty three, you'll be looking at a giant bear holding an axe. <laughs> You'd have probably thought I've been sat near the superglue or the, the, the toilet. I, I would have said I don't generally go back into the show after I've drunk copious amounts of beer. It was probably yeah, what there I we said. Go. Uh, but, um, yes, this time yes. I will. How My, times uh, have changed. <laughs> Matt That's a good excuse, Matt. Matt. Is it just why Nick said must have medical suit. <laughs> <laughs> That's ten a... out of ten for effort, there, Matt. Ten out of ten. Oh, <laughs> just, just yeah, tell yeah, us to hold on for a bit. I'm sure she'll be fine. Uh, do you, do you got any other bits, Dob? That's, I think that's all I had. Well, I've got, I've got a few things now. Um, so I'm going to post this up. Um, now, obviously, I know we've got quite, you know, some 40k players in there, and people seem to get quite excited about this coming out, oh, which is the, new, the new, the new commander Dante. Now, I did notice uh, someone did put a post up when, when this was shared saying. Uh, heroic foot on rock again, but I've I've always had a soft spot for um for Dante in this model, and I I, yeah, I like too. the mask. It's very cool. I might, that that was one of the first. I think it might have been the first time I ever painted gold. It still didn't look like that. I think I just dipped it in paint and put sepia wash all over it. <laughs> and it's like yeah, he's fine. But so he's yeah. out. So for all you Blood Angel players and forty k players, he's um you can get a big shiny new Commander Dante. Um. Now we've put put these up before, and that's um, last argument of King's Conquest. They've got some new new packs out. And this is the one that me and Ken tried out. The uh, this you know these are quite large. These are about thirty eight mil, thirty eight forty mil, and this is a it, it it's a it's a good game. I, I did enjoy the game, um, and they have a skirmish game and a and a large large game rank and flank large, type large. game um yeah i could sorry the first blood is the skirmish <laughs> version so this is this is the size of one of their skirmish forces um but they've just released some cool um some giants as well these are called these are for the city states um and they've just released some oh, looking oh my lord and when i say giant these are massive if you think that these guys are nearly 40 mil miniatures and then How they, they come up giant? To, uh he's he's big um, but I think with the set, Holy you can build him smoke. like him. Now he he's called the Promethean, um, and then you can get the Hephaestian. Can you do one without all the chap. spacey? Oh, can you do without word. science fiction? Because that would be oh that that would work in a a, a sort of uh, Olympian oh. game, wouldn't it? Ooh. Yeah. So um, so very cool. Um, it, it, it's a, it's a fun Jeez. game. Um, I I don't know how much these will be, so um, I imagine a fair bit. Um, <laughs> E wow, eagle figures that's... are yeah he's cool isn't it? I, I love the way i like the trident that's my my favorite thing on there i love the trident um i think you look taste um eagle figures have made some of the little green bastards and i'm not saying that just because they're in greens <laughs> at the minute i mean so we've got <laughs> the eagle figures so make some lovely um uh, napoleonics and um seven years so we've got the doing the 95th um so it's just so you hear you got the uh the command and it's just an example of the guy early period ones aren't they? They're yep, they ones, are. which is great they are. yeah yeah so that, that's very cool um uh but if you go and have a look on their facebook page website as you see though i think they've got about 12 that are coming out mm -hmm. um so those should be out very very soon um and then we were talking last week uh, about rule sets and i said one of my one of my favorite uh rule sets is the game bushido uh, by GCT, I really like um, sort of the combat mechanics, and they've just released a new wave. So I'm not going to. I picked out three out of the. I think it was about 15 miniatures they've released, um, which I thought were, were pretty cool. Um, so we got we got this for the oh. Tengu, which is bird headed. I look, see. I look at these see painting opportunities. Now remember, these are all metal as well. Um, but some lovely miniatures. Um, we got these guys here who um, <laughs> who oh. doesn't want a giant bird of prey. Uh, wow. I say giant bird bread, probably just birds of prey. Come to think of it, um, they were very cool. And then this, this, um, this model here, who's um, they're not nunchucks, I can't think what the giant version's called, or is it just nunchucks? I don't know, but it's it's got know. a start chainy stuff. But they, they've got a whole bunch of stuff out, um, and um, so um, so they're always worth mm. checking out. 
but um yeah lots of um lots of opportunity um but i should guess we should um before we come on to the second portion is just do it's time for the march giveaway so as Ooh, yes. said, we are Ooh, yes. we are sponsored by the lovely people over at uh, boards and swords in derby so remember to go to their website you'll get a five percent discount with the code pcp5 but your uh your giveaway for this month is Drum any roll. 10 of the two fin go oh, away there you go there you go, it's a bit late, but <laughs> <laughs> it is it is any ten of the two fin coats uh paint range. Uh now this is the uh, the paint range that uh Duncan uh Rhodes did and he put it on Kickstarter. I think was it was it over a year ago now, I think. Yeah, well, but it, yeah, it did very well, but they he's um but Boards and Swords stocked the whole range. Um and the winner of the giveaway, which will be drawn next week, can um have a look at that and they can pick any ten. Of those paints um maybe you'll find some that could go particularly well with uh you know a roman color scheme uh, for example <laughs> um and um so you send those over and those will be um sent out do, to do roman stone. concrete color <laughs> roman, <laughs> roman concrete is kind of pinky uh, i know opus opus signinum um, um or, or pompeii uh, shit, which is the other one yes mm. what's great is when we find it over here we get really excited and then you go to rome and you're just walking around and they're just kick like if you see any excavations they're just kicking <laughs> it away they just don't care um if you want to be in a chance of being drawn for this it's the same rules as last time once this stream has ended you need to like and comment on this video um if that's not a live comment it's got to go in the comments afterwards and then what we'll do in next week's stream which will be over on dom's channel during the news section we will do a live draw um and um one lucky person will be the winner so we'll remind you this at the end but just remember to say stream end comment down below um like the video and uh you could be in a chance of, of winning so uh and yeah. tell us what they're like as well because i don't know many people who tried them so so, no, um, I don't know I'm, anyone I'm, who's tried. I'm intrigued. So we're re we're relying on you, lucky person, yeah. <laughs> to tell us <laughs> to tell us what they are like. So there we go. So big thank you to. Of course, if you did want to buy them anyway from Boards and Swords, you could go in and use your code and get five percent. I mean, yeah, you could you could do that. You could, <laughs> you could do that as well. Well said, Dom. <laughs> you could do that as well. Thank you for keeping the contractual part of that going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But well done. Do well know, done. It's, it's, it's like having a legal representative hanging on <laughs> <up> the shoulder. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, God. So, um, so absolutely. So um uh oh someone's just is it actually called just a free section staff? Okay. Right. Oh, that's really that's, disappointing. That's, really that's, disappointing, that's, Billy. <laughs> it really is very disappointing. Can't you make it up? <laughs> Uh, probably uh, we can we can come and call name but so um there's been quite a few questions andy if that's all right some of them are gangs of road related other ones are, uh, are, are a request if you're all right to answer um a few. Yeah, I'll do my best. um yeah, yeah. lovely uh well oh, the first one is from was djs we've got gold coast australia watching so we're mm. we've i think we've gone all the way around the globe now we have it's a live stream so thank you for um for coming along um uh, glindor says um, I think it was it. What what would you say is your favourite rule set that you've actually written? Oh God, really? <laughs> <laughs> that's a bit mean to ask. You want to hear to do <laughs> talk about talk about gangs? That's really now. that's really mean, actually. Yeah, I uh, I think the, th the three main rule sets: Gangs of Rome, Mortal Gods, and the Barons War. All three do something different. Yeah. So I like, I, I know it's a bit of a cop out. I like all three for different reasons. So all right, what's the, the best rule lot... mechanic you've written? Make it easier. <laughs> oh, is that easier? All it. it's all, it's all, no. Uh, <laughs> it, it changes. So. <laughs> it changes. I, like, uh, I like the way that morale affects uh, your groups or your units in the Baron's War. And it's a simple, it's a very simple uh, mechanic that obviously your morale goes up as you lose dudes. Uh, mm -hmm. And then that number can affect in a couple of ways. One, obviously, taking morale tests. One is when you're fighting other groups, it, depending on who's got the higher morale affects your dice rolls. Mm -hmm. So it's got, mm -hmm. I, th I think it's quite uh, slick in that way. Mm -hmm. So for me at the moment, that that's quite cool. Uh, the way that the morale changes as well based on your commander his morale can go up uh it kind of it, it, that kind of works really well i'm really i really i must have and i'm not just saying it because we're talking about gangs of rome 
I really like the action stack. It's changed it. It's kept the game the same, but it's changed it totally. So the way mm. that this this activation works in uh, in Gangs of Rome is really clever, I think. However, I can't claim it as mine because George and I are still arguing over who came up with it. <laughs> so <laughs> I, at the moment, I think I came up with it for a, some rules I was writing for a mech game. There you go, Steve. Uh, and about how your power supply changes to activate your mech so you could do more than one thing. But I think George has taken this and he put it into Gangs of Rome, which was, I think, genius. Mm. So I have to I have to give George the credit for it because he saw this great mechanic and how it would work in Gangs of Rome. Uh, nice. That, it, very, very cool. It's like saying, which is your favourite favorite kid? Whichever, My youngest at the moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so the next question is actually what about one of one of the figures? So um, mm. not for Gangs of Rome, it's for your Sutton Who Warlord. He just wanted to know if there was a reason that he was done sort of lightly armor, but he's a fantastic figure that leads his uh, his saga warband. I think he's on, is it Red Wall? Um, no, I don't. I think uh, there's a series of photographs by uh, some Sutton Who reenactors. And I think that was used to as a, as the uh, yeah. the, 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 the the design behind the figure. So we asked we asked Stavros to design the Sutton Who figure for us. I think he picked that, and that's what he sculpted. There, it does seem to be. It pops up. I, I, I when I play other people's warbands in in Saga, and I'm sure I killed this guy, mm. or he killed me. Like actually, that's no, probably should be he killed me last time. More likely, like, yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it, is, it, is, it, is it is definitely more likely. Uh, Lionheart, um, he said, "Is there going to be an expansion for the second Baron's War with Simon de Montfort?" Yeah, I'd, I'd like to do it. I mean, my dad lives in Evesham, so I'd be very remiss of me not to do it. Uh, but it would just be a set of army lists, I think, because it's only yeah. about 50 years on. So we would just have to do the characters. So uh, ga uh, the Gangs of Rome got it on the brain. Baron's War <laughs> has a commander generator, you know, a character generator. Yeah. So you could actually go and generate all these characters yourself mm. and then just put them on top of what's there. That's, so. that's true. Cause the, the period, because as I said, we were talking before the stream, I'm thinking that we may do one of the uh, those mini campaigns that you released, like the Ignoble mm. Feud. Or but I, the, the book that, um, that I've been reading was just all about the, um, the, the followers of Simon de Montford after they've killed him and the sort of guerrilla war that went on afterwards yeah. with all of these, like the Montiforians, as they, as they called themselves, and then Edward hunting them around the country and them essentially it being a horrific guerrilla warfare. Um, and everyone goes to um, to Ely, that they, they set that it's like Herod the Wake. He went to Ely, they went to Ely, yeah. and again, they set everything on fire. Again, yeah, it's all um, the fans, isn't it? They went and hit it all the fans, so yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah. It's, good. No. it's good around here for hiding. <laughs> um, the uh, uh, John, <laughs> <all> bloody figures. <laughs> Have you started yet, Paul? <laughs> it's just what you were just saying. Obviously, if Paul, if Paul still wants to come on the stream next week, that's um, that's a couple of hours where he won't be sculpting. Uh, so uh, <laughs> at least, well, he might when we as, well, as he, he was last time. He was sculpting last time, actually. He was the yeah. He was to be fair. Um, John said, um, I, th I think he's talking about the um, the that senators. The senators being sort of like as bloodthirsty and uh, behind them once once the um, uh, sort of the imperial um, regime is put into place. I think the politics was still as bloodthirsty behind the scenes. I just think it was it was probably a bit more controlled. Mm. So you could you could put it into the same bit. Really. I can't see <laughs> no. it being, being an issue. Uh, Alex uh, from Storm of Steel uh, would like to know if Asterix and Obelix are going to. Uh, oh, <laughs> we, when we did the when we did the original, uh, we asked Steve Sala to sculpt Asterix and Obelix for us. Uh, so there were figures done. But then we uh, we bottled it because of the uh, copyright uh, things, legal, the, co the rights, <laughs> yeah, the copyright thing behind it, and the the French company behind Asterix and Obelix are worse than Games Workshop. 
Oh, right. Wow. So, wow. So we didn't release them. We bought. We we absolutely bottled it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they're there. So they're there somewhere. You know. They're there somewhere. <laughs> I think um, Steve still has them, and they're beautiful. And you don't want the French really coming after point. you. Uh, definitely yeah. don't. You know, definitely <laughs> not. No. No. Uh, and then that was that. <laughs> Bloody <laughs> working. <laughs> Good man. <laughs> um, David uh, did second that, but he said a great idea by two Tartars. Um, Lionheart, um, again, he said, have you ever considered a medieval renaissance version of, say, Gangs of War, of all the gangs in Italy, so like the Borgias um, and all of the oh, fights? That would, be re- that would be really cool. Uh, I think the beauty of it is we could you could take the Gangs of Rome rules and stick them anywhere. Mm. Yeah. So they, that's that's kind of how we like to write as well. So you can you can take the rules and, and reskin them. That is, that is, I mean, they're, they're, I mean, there's so many. If you want to talk about gang warfare, different different periods. You, you mm. know, you're a big fan of, of um, samurai, but obviously, once you get into sort of, is it the Edo period, and the, the the gangs really start setting up, and, and that that would be cool as well. And there's already a big range oh, yeah. of miniatures for those. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Shring uh, said, uh, "Oh, next week's during Tom's painting roundup. This is my new project, gangs." So, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, John says, "If you uh, if you put Frankie Howard in as Lucky, you may get me on this." Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, and then uh, Shring makes a good point, um, which is might be a good game for kids' war game introductions. Oh. Romans are always in your syllabus. Absolutely. Yeah, I think so. I, I yeah, I think so. It's quite simple. Again, we've made the rules quite simple. It's all about uh, pairing off your dice. So you're looking for successes, and they just. They just pair off, and any that are left is a is a score. So it's quite a simple process to play. Absolutely, so, yeah. and also, yeah, if you you know you're going to be a, a bloodthirsty politician, so if you want to go into uh, <laughs> you want to go, you can get, you can get your start here. Um, uh, double dip, double dip. No, he gets here time. Does does your campaign have a solo co op mode? Uh, it, it, it won't, as it is at the moment. Uh, but you you could there is a, a solo scenario at the moment and there's a co-op scenario at the moment. But uh, I find I find this really difficult this question because I do get it. I get uh, why people want to have solo and, co- and, and co-op rules. Yeah. But for me, it's wargaming, and I want to play and crush someone. So <laughs> you know, uh, 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 I, w- I want to actually man. see the person I'm beating. So. And I know, and you know, I I get it, but for me, that's how I I, I pitch the games really. Okay, no, absolutely. Uh, and then um, you get lots of suggestions now. Uh, maybe do a supplement that covers Constantinople mm, in the Eastern Empire. In the Eastern Empire. That's the first one that came to mind for me. Yeah, having a, yeah the old chariot. Oh, you need is yeah different different uh, buildings and funky costumes. You'd be mm. right. Absolutely. That's that would be very cool. I can see that being very elab, um, sort of very elaborate sculpts, uh, very cool looking. Uh, David uh, is <laughs> caved and backed it. <laughs> Hope you're happy. <laughs> you're, you're up this. Thank go. you. Good mag. Now they're getting on. No, not, not, they're just throwing it. Oh, gangs, yeah. gangs of Atlantis. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, El, El Turo, Hello, I'm not sure I've um, seen the stream before, but welcome. I uh, love to put some miniatures, but a lot of models recently need uh, need to do a War of the Roses selection, though. Yes, please. Mark, be, Mark, who I, Mark, who uh, I mentioned earlier, is a massive War of the Roses fan. So it will happen at some point. Excellent. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I don't do I, 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 Do you know, I realise I haven't actually, well, apart from something that, I've been working. I haven't actually um, done any Wars of Roses now for about nine months. I haven't painted any. I, haven't, I, I finished it off with that massive Warwick base, and I, I haven't gone near them since for the moment. I played it. I've just, I've just, I just, I just, I modelled so many, and I kind of got to the end of my Perry stash of plastics, and, and I haven't done any more. Or maybe I need to go back. You, know, you uh, need Yarch, another group. I, I do. Need I another do. battalion. <laughs> Yorkshire, he's attending salute this year. Pa- uh, passport ready, emergency tea bags ready, and anti avocado shots. <laughs> <laughs> my my favourite 
Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Ken, but my favourite thing is you when you got given Thai food tea. At the oh, table. Yeah, that was the oh, indignation no, was hilarious. <laughs> the absolute um, <laughs> horror, especially after all the, having to switch rooms. Um, adventures in miniature painting. How are you doing? Made his first foot sort order a few months ago and was amazed with the quality. So he made another one a couple of days later. Thank you. And is Thank that, you um, oh, this will be this will put the cat amongst the pigeons, won't it? Uh, who's your favourite sculptor? <laughs> 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 oh, I feel that's a loaded dude. question. Yeah, sure. that's really, yeah. really. Oh, Paul Hicks, of course. <laughs> <laughs> we'll move that. We'll move on quite quickly from that one. Eldra um, uh, said, "Andy, uh, I love your miniatures. Any oh, any chance of Warrior Roses miniatures? Well, there you go. We just had it. So, yeah, so we yes. will definitely do some. They support. will. Um, and then uh, uh, where have we got here? Paul, yeah, Lurkio, and Kenneth." <laughs> <laughs> um, definitely, De definitely noticing a theme amongst the uh, uh, amongst the crowd here. Uh, <laughs> um, to be fair, this is what I, I thought of Billy said. Um, uh, tanks are but uh, the three musketeers and the cardinals men. That'd be fun. Mm -hmm. Oh, totally. You could really, it would really yeah, work for that. And I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the, the musketeers. Thanks. So yeah, that, that, that would be very cool. Um, what's it? What's this one? Uh, this is weird, but I just love the geese and the mules. <laughs> <laughs> well, the geese, the geese, are, the geese are back in. So uh, it's like a mob of geese because they use them like uh, guard dogs. So yeah, absolutely. And then um, you know, people were saying they loved hiding in the crowds. So that was it. I I liked the hiding in the crowds. We kind of can tell what my opponent would run and hide in the crowd. And I was chasing them. That was the thing that was frustrating for me. Well, what, what um, we've done as well is uh, with the with the hiding in the crowd feature, you must come out the following turn, so you can't lurk in there uh, indefinitely now. So oh, you, have, good. you can go in, but you have to come out. Oh, but, good. So I, I can uh, wait outside. Interesting. Uh, you can't come out of a crowd that is angry as well now. Ah, oh, so if they're in the crowd and then you were lucky enough to, your opponent was lucky enough to activate them and you get, get them angry, they can't come out. Yeah, they can't come out. So. Oh, that's good. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Oh, I do like that. Um, <laughs> Robin um, says um, the action mechanism sounds quite good for, and solo friendly. Um, uh, Grant um, uh, says I have to start some Lancastrians. Did you start up one, Dom? <laughs> No, uh, uh, nothing to do with that. Do with that. Mm. Um, I, I, um, uh, do I? I've managed to get away with not doing any so far. I will do some Lancastrians. I was just trying to decide who, who I want to do um, because I can't do the Tudors because it makes me too angry. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I, I can't, I can't do it. I, I don't know. I might do. I, I was looking at the Earl of Oxford, but I did, I did think about doing, um, doing the early Warder Roses and doing uh, one of the early ones like Audley or um, Shrewsbury, someone who died quite early on. Um, because um, you remember in the early part of the Wars of Roses that it was the Lancastrians who suffered quite heavily at the start, then they got their own back, and then of course, then it all went wrong for them. Um, I'll think about it. Um, Shaco James says, Andy, are you going to? Oh, I, I... <laughs> if you <laughs> well done, James. So, yes, of course, you'd be more than welcome. We are having a games I... day, uh, in Derby again. Well, when we when we last time I came on. It was a week before number three, and yes, I was, was. going to come, ah. and I got COVID. Oh no! Oh, yeah, so and I, I got away with COVID for the whole time. My my wife's in the NHS, you know, so we've been hosing her down in the garden and stuff. <laughs> and I got I got away with it, and then I got COVID the week before I oh, came. Oh, uh, so well, Ill. so be... ill. You'd be more I'd than welcome, and you could you could bring anything. You could bring Gangs of Rome. You could bring the Barons' War. You could bring anything you liked, or even if you didn't want to, and just come and take part in some games. You'd be I'd love to come. We'd, I'd love to come. We'll, more than we'll welcome. Definitely bring Gangs of Rome. I would love to come. Twenty first of October. Twenty first of October. I um I I I, I, I think that yeah <laughs> we've um for everyone when we announced this it was brilliant and then we've just had so many games ideas i think it's gonna be a very diverse um which is brilliant i know um i know ian again i think is don't quote me actually no quote me because then you'll do it he's gonna he's definitely gonna put on a big windy boat game um for the first for the first <laughs> half of the day take over half his shop again doing it fantastic brilliant stuff double uh double dip uh <laughs> Sorry, it's the name. Stop. I can't. It makes me laugh every time. Um, with the action stack activation system, do you think it would be easy for him to write a basic AI for enemies? He's done similar things with Dead Man's Hand. Yeah, I, I can't see why not. You're just choosing a, a pile of actions. So, um, you know. 
Perfect. Yep. So for those, so for him, so yes, it, and that, that's a good thing. Obviously, with something with gaming, it, it, modding games and and doing bits and bobs of it, I think is one of the things that makes it fun um, to all games and coming up with scenarios and sharing them on like the Facebook groups, which is something I mean, I've oh, seen, totally, yeah. especially on on the Barons War group. Um, is is mad the scenarios that people have come up yeah. with. And, um and videos it's um it's awesome um matt says um, he has a pot of green paint just waiting to paint up just for you, <laughs> just for you. no you don't <sighs> no you no you don't oh it has to be jasper as well didn't it oh, yeah. um uh, red said uh any idea on the release date for foot sore plastic samurai <laughs> i've done, they're not even on my radar but do you know what if i it's very difficult because if i I think we were talking about stuff earlier. What we'd like to do, if it would be the period, I would just go and live in. So yeah. I would, I would write samurai games till the cows come home. So, <laughs> no, but, but you know, my, uh, Graham and I, when we talked about Test of Honor, Graham's taken it and run with it. So I, I respect that and, and leave him alone. <laughs> I, mean, I played um, I played Test of Honor a couple of weeks ago, and it was the first time I'd um, we, we we play it to death, and you know we love it. So, yeah, I, I love it. So I, I I armed a mounted samurai with a bow just to see what would happen, and my opponent told me no, I can't do that ever again. Uh, <laughs> it, it frustrated him so much because all he was doing was I, I just used him to pick off um guys in groups and then they'd have to take you know a morale test and then they would go backwards and this guy's just riding around <laughs> shooting people yeah. um it was very frustrating um and finally it's not really do, uh, do the percy's hard nor i don't want to do the percy's um <laughs> I, I don't know i want to do someone who's not been done i I'll, I'll find someone don't worry i'll find someone with some horrendous coat of arms um probably not as bad as warwick to do oh and here we go sorry last question is the gangs of rome beginner pledge come with two or three mobs three I don't know why it says two. It should be three. Awesome stuff. Where we go? Well, that's. Um, <laughs> I hope the. I thought it was going to be a quick fire round of questions. So you probably. Even just, <laughs> it's like I ask Andy the section of here. But um, oh, um, are you um, are you going to be at Salute this year? I can't. It's my wife's birthday. Oh, so uh, I, it's actually on the day. So I. Uh, yes. Oh, sorry. Yes. You did same as you. I I did yes. mention it. And I got the side eye. So. Uh, you sort of muted the idea, and it just. You're obviously having didn't, a very stupid sail, idea. It didn't sail anywhere near, yeah. So, <laughs> not this year, I'm afraid. So, no. It's going to be... Um, I did, did see that maybe it's it. Everyone's got their same birth, birthday on the uh, on the same day. I will try again to see, to see if it'll fly. I'll try. It won't. It won't. <laughs> it won't. You it haven't won't. got a hope her, in hell. I, did, I asked her if she wanted to go to London for a birthday. But she, she was on time. I, ju I tried sniffed that, that one I out like, quick. I was like, <laughs> London in the show? You know? <laughs> So I'm sure there's something that, you know, just, I, you know, I'm sure she was just thinking West End, not, mm, you know, not the sort of show you were thinking. <laughs> no, like no, it. no, no. Um, well, that's brilliant. Well, I said that time of the show, because I've got a few of them, um, where we share some of the viewers' uh, photos and what you guys have been working on. So, guys, remember, there's a link down below to the Facebook group. Um, if you're not a member, come on there. You can you can come on there, share whatever the hell you're working on. Any questions? We, we love to see what people are working on. And there's and we're getting close to a thousand members. Thirty-five in there. members we, away from a thousand. Well, we would we probably wow. be on about fifteen hundred. But Dom's questions free keep people from uh, <laughs> from entering. Yeah, but we don't. Um, we're not on the riffraff in here. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I there was someone who joined um this week and they 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 gave such an amazing response to um the, the final one which is you know you don't affect essentially don't be a dick um mm. which i think is the last question they gave such an amazing answer to it I, they might have even said yes i will be but it was such it was so good i just said yes come in <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's fine. Here. I, i'll set it this up and oh geez right. <laughs> well all right right well so um over now we'll start off um and gaz has been doing some stuff Ooh, at his third crusade lovely and they are they are very very cool they're five, they're five that, that white is fantastic, isn't it? They are five forward, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah I do look at my white now and kind of go, why can't mine be that? <laughs> why does mine come out? So I good? just don't even attempt white anymore. It puts me in a bad mood. <laughs> <laughs> um, everyone likes a bit of land there, and Gary's uh, been working on those. Those are Calpe, um, and they are Ooh. nice. So that's that's all metal. 
all metal all that's all a way. proper Ooh. unit so that is that is brilliant. it looks very spi- it looks very spiky if you get it from the wrong angle that's gonna definitely yeah, cause you some it damage. would hurt uh alid um has been um now is this for chain of command I can't yeah i think he's um he's currently into chain of command so i think he's been painting some um uh, are they Soviet? Yeah, they're Soviets, aren't they? Yeah, Soviets. Yeah, Soviets. Yeah, yeah, Soviets yeah, yeah. yeah, I know. I know he put some pictures of uh, some captured um, T thirty fours, but um, yeah, big, big, big fan of fifteen millimeters. Is Alid? They are very, very nice. Uh, they brought good launches to the Holy Land. <laughs> <laughs> he bleached them out. Uh, Carl, um, I just really Ooh, like this, uh, this nice. GI. I just thought he was really cool. I really like the shading he's done. He's really, job really nice. That. Very nice. Now, please do 50 more uh, yeah. by next yeah. week and keep up with Dom and report back. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so Graham is new to the group. And uh, so he posted up a number of photos. So he posted up um, some Vikings. And what did you uh, do? So- I posted these because I thought these were awesome. <laughs> I, I, I thought these were wicked. I mean, that is brilliant. That you had all sorts of hairy ass Vikings and various other lovely figures, and you picked those. I mean, they are very good. I'll give them. That. They are brilliant. Well, again, we talked about this because I've been playing, a, as you guys know, a lot of Zero Two Hundred, and I can see a whole scenario uh, where these guys are on are on stage, but they're actually partisans, and um, and all hell breaks. You've seen Inglorious Bastards, right? <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. Like, is it is it just is it just me or is that Debbie Harry in the middle? <laughs> <laughs> what now? <laughs> yes, now. <laughs> yeah, I think so too now. Um, oh, fantastic, but cracking work, mate. Lovely stuff. Uh, now, I, <laughs> I had to, I had to share this because Justin uh, is working on some Highlanders, and he's got that Highlander to the point where now I would stop because yeah, in, the next, yeah. the next, in the next part lies madness. Which is the the target. But you know so how I good will... a painter Justin is. He, I know. He'll so continue he, and he'll he be will even continue. better. Um, but he looks awesome already. See, I would just go in there and I'd just get a pen now, probably. Just, just draw it and, and it'd be really <laughs> shoddy. But I wanted to to share this now because I was wondering in a week's time if, if if we'd see a picture of Justin when he'd be like, he'd have like, you know, pulled his hair out and he's just been like, <laughs> um, <laughs> after the, And there would just be some tartan. But lovely work. I'm looking forward to seeing how they all come together. Uh, now I'm not entirely sure what this is, um, so you're going to have to help me. But Neil's been working on some German World War Two. Uh, That's a it's an Italian Panhard one, isn't it? It's oh, not it's a Panhard. Panhard. No, it's a Panhard one three eight. So you're it's right. a um, French armored car. French one, yeah. Captured and utilized by the Germans. But yeah, lo- lovely model and some That's great camo on that as well. Looks really, really oh. good. I just love how he's picked. He's picked out the rivets. I just think that's. That's awesome. I mean, my it just it just looks very cool and very used, which is you know, yes, no, it should be. Mm-hmm. Um, Apart from one big problem with that, have we noticed what it is, children? Well, it's on a wooden table, so does that count as a base? Based. <laughs> it's on a big wooden table. It could just be one big base. <sighs> no, Andy, where, where do you fall on the, uh, the, base, <laughs> the basing of vehicles <laughs> debate? Do you do you base or not base your vehicles? <laughs> <laughs> I would base it. Hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, that's it. Right. Good answer. Uh, uh, good sure. man. You're on sure. back on again. <laughs> I'm sure Alex will agree with everybody there. <laughs> Absolutely. Um now Paul, awesome painter. Um, so we've seen his historical stuff that he's done, uh, but he's done he's done Aragorn. Ooh. And I loved it. I, I, the, the, the face is, is it? so that's from the Free Hunters set. That uh, is lovely. But my favourite, he's done the um, the braces that he takes off Boromir, <laughs> and he's done the giant. I love it. Very, very nice, awesome. Paul. Awesome. Um, Paul Richardson, uh, <laughs> basing weird. <laughs> but you base your boats. Yeah, he bases his boats. <laughs> no consistency. Come on, come um, on, Ken. <laughs> Uh, Paul Richardson, he's been working on some new model army. Oh, very nice. Um, which are very, very cool. Wall of wrong side, but very nice. That's true. That's true. Um, uh, to be fair, I think I'm going to be seeing a lot of these the next time I play Miller. I, I think, uh, judging by the battle report you put up, you're going to be only facing cavalry. I think I've had I had a comment on that battle report, right? That said I I couldn't watch this because it was so one sided, and I sort of thought, well, I didn't. 
we didn't sit there and go, I'm going to purposefully make like roll these <laughs> dice. We didn't sit there like rolling and rolling. Oh, it'd be really funny, won't it, if we roll loads of ones? <laughs> um, I thought, I was like, okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you for taking the time to comment. He probably spent longer commenting than he did watching. Um, Phil, um, now I love this. So he's been working on some World War II Germans as well. Oh, mm. lovely. That's lovely brilliant. Stuff. That is brilliant. That's fantastic stuff. Phil. I love Great the guy. Stuff. I love the one dismounting. That is really, yeah. really cool. Whose figures are those? Are they oh, they're warlord. warlord. They are warlord. Oh really? Yeah. I didn't know they did the sort of dismounted things. That's great. Yeah, it's quite an early one they did. I think wow. Raos is it? Is it called Raos? Oh, be wrong. But yeah, it's a set. Very good. Very nice. Hmm. Not based. Um, <laughs> not based though. Yeah. No, 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 good no, point. No. Very good. Point. Um, now this one I put up. Uh, Steve Haynes. He played some black powder. And no. oh, look you know, <laughs> Steve and his games. I mean, gee whiz. Oh. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Steve, your table is bigger than my flat. <laughs> I'm not I, a monster. I, I, you should say, guys, that um, Alex is not far off the big 10K on the subscribers. So, yes. um, so if, you, make if, sure you if, you're, if you're not a subscriber to Storm of Steel, and if not, why not? Head over there and um, and, and check it out and see if you get them over the uh, the 10K. So there's, so there's more historicals go, going up into the uh, into the bigger leagues. Steve, but, uh, approximately how many figures are on that table? Because... Well... This was the problem. I, I see. I was looking at all his photos. I was like, I like this one because I like all of the gods marching, but it doesn't take into effect mm -hmm. the entire board. Um, so I, I, I think there was, yeah, quite, quite a lot. I just, I, I just love watching his battle reports. He gets so excited and so into his games. It's brilliant. <laughs> just, I'm, I'm just thousands I'm, and thousands of figures. I'm just thinking really? of the amount of hours put into painting those Napoleonics. It brings me out in hives. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. So from something um, historical and which looks awesome to something which is incredibly weird and looks awesome. Um, and I, we put this up the other week, but I had to show it in action. And that was Steve's tentacles. <laughs> oh, yes. I For Kings of War. And I love them. I mean, I don't. I, I, like, I like his war, but I just it's just awesome. Um, I have, I have I, no I, idea I, what's I, going I on it. there, but it's amazing. I mean, it, it is like something from a nightmare or uh, no, manga. Or, <laughs> or, or a buffet. Keeping with the way we've got uh, a lovely uh, 40k model uh, from Stephen. Um, and I really, oh. as we know, he, he puts up some lovely models with really interesting like color schemes, especially like his... Um, I forgot what they're called, but the gold guys, uh, Stormcast. Um, but I really, really liked what he did here with like the mutate, like the pink mutancy skin. Yes, I really liked it. He does look brutal, mm. very, very cool. Um, so nice one. Uh, <laughs> uh Tim, uh, has been doing some minifigs. Oh, wow. So I thought it'd be nice to uh, to share some of those, but a really nice retro. I love it. It's a good-looking unit, too. They're very, very cool. Uh, VK, um, everyone knew Von Ketteringham, um, and um, he was playing some Black Powder for the American Civil War. Um, so uh, so he got up there. Now, are those the ones that he They're Kens. They're Kens. Kens. They were <laughs> well, Kens, yeah. They're partly Kens, and then I think he supplemented them with a few more. But, um, yeah, really good. So absolutely. Absolutely awesome, and then finally, again, because he's, he's it's it's a disclaimer <laughs> quite back, uh, because it's Warren and he's always last in there because he's a Warren. One day we will remember to put him first. He's just painted up that, uh, I thought the, uh, the, cam the, the camo on it, but it's on a base with a road, so that's, uh, <laughs> that's a wonderful ca uh, camo job, isn't it? I, that is, mm. must be airbrushed, that must be, hasn't it? I'm sure he'll tell you when he wakes up yeah, um, he and watches up. the stream. When he wakes up and watches the stream. Um, so, guys, thank you very much for posting all of those. Please carry on to do it. If we missed anything out, is sorry, is there's so many awesome things that go up in there. We just can't. We can't possibly get get through them all. I mean, one day maybe we will just have to do a show, or a slide, just a slide <laughs> show. Um, and um, but anyway, so um, I suppose what's up is Andy. Thank you very much. For taking the time oh, you're very to, to join to uh, to join yeah, us, cheers, and, um, hopefully, I was going to say, I'm, I mean, I'm I'm down for for the new book. 
because I've got my I've got my bakery down there. I've got blood on the Aventine. I've got my extra stuff down there. I know Rob Robin's got a couple of uh, a couple of sets. So uh, hopefully, um, yeah, if we um, say well, maybe we maybe we'll come and maybe we should pop over to Balls and Swords and put mm. the new rules. Yeah, Definitely. absolutely. Definitely. That sounds good to me. It's that sounds yeah, good. We to weren't pre-booking any tables, but you're booked. There you go. Yes, that's <laughs> yeah, <it. that's> <laughs> you know, you're 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 in. Oh, there was no, there was one other. There was one other person. There was one other. Oh, somebody coming um, from miles away, from a long, 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 long way away. We have to let them. Or um, yes. <laughs> we're going international. We have people coming from. It was Ireland last time as the furthest. Now, we're, oh no, France, Ireland, France. This time, I think it's Denmark. So, um, so that's um, cool. Yeah. I've probably I've probably got that wrong now. So here we go. Um, anyway, guys, thank you so much for, as always, taking the time um, on your Monday night to uh, to sit here and and, uh, and listen to us. Um, just a reminder that if you want to be in for a chance of winning 10, any 10 of the Two Thin Coats paint range, you need to like and comment on this video after the stream is done. You've got until the stream starts next week. That's when the uh, the cutoff is. Um, or up until the point we actually run the, uh, the giveaway, we actually really. The thing. Is yes. that where we actually do yeah. the thing? That would be the point mm. it cuts off. So mm -hmm. you've got up until 9 o'clock next Monday. Um, and, of course, we are joined by Mr. Paul Hicks next Monday, who's going to spill all the dirt. On, uh, on Andy <laughs> and what it's and, uh, and what it's been like uh, working on um, the weird and wonderful models that we that we have, including the, the leper. My favourite sculptor, yeah. That's yeah, the one. Your, 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 your favourite sculptor. That's what that's what I'm going to put on the on these little taglines there. It's going to say Paul Higgs, Andy Hobday's favourite sculptor <laughs> <laughs> underneath there. Um, but Andy, thank you so much for, for taking. Oh, very welcome. Us. Thanks. Um, Thanks we for inviting will be, me. No, we'll be it's a pleasure thank you for coming um we'll be with you all again next next week on dom's channel, yeah, um, channel. I, yeah. I don't think there's anything else i to say then we hope you have a brilliant hobby field week and we will see you all next week and i've forgotten to line up the outro so you're gonna have to bet with me <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a message to end on. There you go. <laughs> Absolutely. And what a be what a what a better way to go. So thank you everyone. We'll see you all next week. Take care. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye. Bye.